for Angels Spring Training Baseball this afternoon from Tempe Diablo Stadium. The Angels get set to take on the Chicago White Sox. Angels wrapping up a two-game homestand here at Tempe Diablo. Another beautiful day in the Valley. We had record temperatures yesterday. Warm again today for Sunday afternoon baseball. Terry Smith along with Jose Mota. It's our pleasure to be with you for today's action. And today, Jose, we're going to see Matt Shoemaker on the mound for the Angels. This will be start number four for him this spring. The last time we saw him on the mound was against Kansas City. In that ball game, he had four scoreless innings. He looked so sharp, and he has throughout the spring and dating back to the bullpen sessions and to the live BP sessions. Terry, he's a versatile guy. You need a ground ball, he'll go out there and give it to you. And also very important for Matt Shoemaker that he is making quality pitches early in the counts because hitters like to swing away early, and that versatility comes into play a lot because once he gets a hit, that splitter is in play, and it is at times very devastating. Well, a pitcher needs a catcher to do his job, and boy, have we been seeing that from the Angels catchers this spring as far as how they're handling the pitchers and also how they're controlling the running game. Oh, right now, they project their pop time. You know, when the catcher receives the baseball until that glove is hit at second base, well, the Angels have been doing a fantastic job. Carlos, or Marti Maldonado, has been tremendous. You talk about Carlos Perez. He is doing it all being accurate and getting picked up by, of course, their infielders. The Angels starters, by the way, gave up the most stolen bases last year. And of course, most of them came in the very first inning. Terry, think about it. If you can stop the run and stop guys from going to scoring position in the very first inning, how much confidence that'll give to your starting staff? Well, it's going to help you. There's no doubt about that. And Mike Socia talks about his catching core. <laughs> We have two catchers who are extraordinary throwers in Carlos Perez and uh, Maldonado. So uh, those two guys are, are, are definitely going to contain a running game. Uh, we've been doing a good job with our pitchers of, uh, of controlling the jumps, and these guys are making good throws. So we're getting the, you know, the caught stealings uh, this spring. But um, I, I, think the, I think it's just the talent. I think both these guys throw well and other teams respect it and don't have as many opportunities to run as they might with some other guys. Well, Carlos Perez will be the Angels' starting catcher today, and not only is he doing things behind the plate, he's been doing it with the bat, Jose. The last three games he's played in, two homers and a triple. Terry, I think we all know the way Carlos finished 2015, hitting over 320 in September, he is more than capable of doing more with the bat. And that's such an asset to the Angels at the bottom third of the lineup. He's been driving the ball a little bit better. His load up is a little bit different. We're going to take a closer look at that, but it's good to see that he's getting also some backspins and that lazy fly ball is out of the way. Why? Look at last season, widespread, and look at this spring, a little narrower, but the key is Look at the leg kick. He's getting more drive. He's getting the bat to stay flatter through the zone here in the spring and a good two-hand finish. We know what Maldonado brings and the capabilities he has also by getting on base and maybe becoming a better hitter. But Carlos has proven he can be an option for Mike Socia for situational hitting, too. And, of course, go out there and get some things happening when making contact in the bottom of the order. Yeah, definitely a noticeable difference in his approach at the play. One guy who was back with the Angels yesterday had missed the last four games, Cameron Maben, and he was searching for a hit yesterday. He got two of them. Boy, in about a space of, what, three or four innings, we got to see the athlete on display. This guy can gallop with the best and good to see as Mike Socha pointed out after the game. The contact being made and the results coming, especially this one going the other way. It's good to know he's not jumping to try to think about getting bases, taking the extra base and the instincts that he shows on the bases, on the straight steal and then also doing it on the instinct of a ball of dirt. How quick he is to go out there and accelerate. He's going to be a plus for the Angels and also a guy that we know. Everybody says Terry is a very good teammate. All right, the Angels and the Chicago White Sox. It's coming up in just a few minutes here in Tempe. Hot, hot weather today for baseball. Matt Shoemaker against Carlos Rodon, the pitching matchup here at Tempe Diablo. The lineups and the action coming up next on Fox Sports West. <laughs>
Stadium. So glad you could join us here on Fox Sports West and of course on AM 830. Terry Smith, Jose Mora, Jorge Sevilla as the Angels and the White Sox get ready to match up here in Tempe. For the White Sox and manager Rick Renteria, first year as a manager of the White Sox. He is the former manager of the Chicago Cubs. Did that for a year. Happy with the group he's put together. He's got Adam Engel leading off. One of the top prospects he's playing in center field. Everth Cabrera, shortstop from Nicaragua, is batting second. Melky Cabrera is in left field. Steady player Melky is batting third. Cody Ashey having a good spring with the power numbers. Designated hitter, the former Philly is batting fourth. Tyler Saladino, who's pretty much has a job with the White Sox, probably at second base, but he's playing third base today. They're taking a look at him in different spots. He's quite versatile. Saladino's at third base, batting fifth. Matt Davidson is playing first base, former Diamondback big prospect. Yoan Moncada, the talk of Cuba, and one of the highest rated players in all of baseball prospect wise. Moncada is playing second base, batting seventh. Omar Narvaez is the catcher for the White Sox, batting eighth. And Reimer Liriano is batting ninth. Liriano is in right field. Matt Shoemaker and the Angels will be soon taking the field. And Mike Socha with Cole Calhoun leading off in right field. Mike Trout getting things going again. Swing the bat well last couple of days. He is in center field as always batting second. Albert Pools hitting over 400 so far in the spring. Designated hitter batting third. Luis Valbuena at first base batting fourth. Cameron Maving swinging the bat better yesterday. In left field batting fifth. Danny Espinosa batting sixth at second base. Cliff Pennington. Batting seventh at shortstop, Carlos Perez, who's been hot with the bat. Carlos, a couple of home runs and six RBIs here in the spring, is batting eighth. Aim batting ninth at third base. Caleb Coward is. Yunel Escobar still nursing an abdominal issue and uh, talking to Yunel today. He says he is day to day, does not expect him as much longer, and certainly they're taking the most precautionary route at this point. So, Shoemaker on the mound, Terry, maybe another record setting in temperatures here in the Valley, but for sure it's great for baseball. All righty, Jose. We are uh, just a minute or so away from the start of today's ball game. The umpires, Ted Barrett, will be the ball and strike umpire behind home plate. And the umpires on the bases, Jim Reynolds, Dana DeMuth, and Jordan Baker here at Tempe Diablo. 340 down the left field side, 420 to dead center. It is 360 down in the right field corner. And the power alleys expand to uh, 400 feet in left center and right center. Who's in, who's out? It's brought to you by in and out Burgers. That's what a hamburger is all about. You heard uh, Jose mention Yunel Escobar. He's out of the lineup uh, again today. In the lineup for the Angels at third base will be uh, Caleb Cowart. And as Jose mentioned, uh, right now Escobar still listed as day to day. Matt Shoemaker is just about ready to complete his warm-up tosses. The Angels have on the red tops with the white pants. And as far as the White Sox, they have on the black tops, the white numerals and lettering, and they have on the gray pants. These two teams squared off exactly two weeks ago, and that was a ball game at Cattleback Ranch, and the White Sox won that game 10 to 2. That stopped the Angels' seven-game winning streak to start the Cactus League. And uh, so we'll see if the Angels can pay back the White Sox here today as these two teams get ready to uh, match up for the final time this spring. First batter up for Chicago is Adam Engel. He's playing center field for them. 25-year-old outfielder who was in A ball, double A, and triple A a year ago. He can really run. He had 45 stolen bases last year in the minors. First pitch today from Shoemaker, a little bit low. We're underway, and the count, one ball, no strikes. Infield backed up except for Coward. He's right across from the bag at third, and here's the next delivery that caught the inside corner. Game time, party time, or any time, send in Madalena Cabernet or Madalena Chardonnay, and you won't strike out. It's found at Angel Stadium and your favorite retailer. Our game time temperature today, 94 degrees. First pitch at 111. Two balls, one strike to count. Here's the next delivery, and that one is a ball. It's popped foul on the right side. That's going to get back and out of play. Okay, Master Maker back to work. Fastball. 
two and four seamer. As we were talking before the game with Matt Shoemaker, sometimes amping it up is not the best thing, even though he can set up hitters to finish upstairs because they're so aware of that southern movement with that splitter. Counts level here on Engel is hitting just 167 this spring, and there's a split finger pitch that gets him swinging, struck him out. And that's the game's first out. Shoemaker in that last start that he had for the Angels, that was in surprise against Kansas City last week. He had uh, four scoreless innings. He allowed just one hit, had a couple of strikeouts, and a walk issued. He's looking pretty sharp, and there's always that hesitation that you are cautious of and Terry we have not seen any type of hesitation for a guy that you know the way the season ended for him last year in September getting struck in the head and he does not hold back there's no recoiling and he is as fluid as they come first delivery here on Everest Cabrera switch hitting shortstop who's spent some time with Baltimore last year he was taking it was in there in the 0 one it's a little bit low one ball one strike Around the infield today, the Angels have Luis Valbuena playing first base with Danny Espinosa at second, Caleb Coward at third, and the shortstop is Cliff Pennington. Here's the next pitch. That's off speed on the outside corner, called strike. Cameron Maben is the left fielder with Mike Trout in center and Cole Calhoun in right. Carlos Perez is catching. Albert Pujols is DHing and Matt Shoemaker. Number 52 is on the mound, and he's ready to come in with the one-two pitch. And a swing and a miss. Struck him out. Back-to-back -back strikeouts to start off the ball game. Melky Cabrera will be the next batter. He's got it amped up right now with some very good movement. So what happened with the angle now, same thing with Everett Cabrera. Uh, Two-seam fastballs running back over the plate, and really, Carlos Perez giving him a nice target to start it off the plate to begin with and let it run naturally. Here's Melky Cabrera, another switch hitter who will bat from the left side. Seven for 35 this spring. 296 hitter a year ago for the White Sox. Here's the pitch, and that breaking ball is in there for a called strike. Melky Cabrera now 32 years old. Number of years with the Yankees. There's a pitch that's low and inside on him, and that moves him all the way out of the batter's circle. Melky Cabrera will be a free agent at the end of the season. Final year of his three year deal with the White Sox. Been an all star once in his career. Guy who's had a 200 hit season. That was back in 2011. There he chases one and misses it, and he's in the hole one and two, and Shoemaker is a strike away from striking out the side in order here in the first inning. This heat could be helping here a little bit on his grip and the way the ball's tailing down, especially that firm drop on that splitter. Angels have three on the right side of the infield. The next delivery, it's hit high in the air into right center, shallow right center. Cole Calhoun is circling under. He'll make the grab, and the inning is over. Quick clean inning for Matt Shoemaker. Nothing for the White Sox here in the first top of the first inning was brought to you by Rennick Subaru. For Subaru, don't forget the Subaru A Lot to Love event. Think Rennick first. R-E-N-I-C-K Subaru.com. We go to the bottom of the first inning. Scoreless here in Tempe on the Angels Baseball Radio Network and Fox Sports West.
Calhoun will lead off the Angels bottom of the first inning and the first pitch from the big lefty Rodon that one is taken for a called strike no balls one strike Calhoun Trout and Pujols the top three in the batting order today. They do have a right side infield shift on with Calhoun batting and he takes that one low and outside fans don't forget long live the hard working the proud the tenacious and long live the trucks that are as dependable as the people that drive them right now get a great deal during the Ram truck month. Here's the next pitch and that's low and away two and one on Cole Calhoun. Calhoun hitting 250 this spring. He's had a homer. He's driven in six runs. Here's the next pitch. And that one he's checking. Looked a little low. It was. It's three balls and one strike. No, there's no doubt Carlos Rodon can get it up there. He is from Miami. Went to North Carolina State. High, high draft pick, obviously. And uh, in terms of strikeouts, last year, well over his strikeout per inning. Here's a one hopper that's hit to uh, the shortstop playing on the right side of the infield not far from second it's stopped there by Everett Cabrera and he'll throw out Cole Calhoun 6 3 ground out one away and Mike Trout will be the next batter. We're done 28 starts 165 innings 54 walks 168 strikeouts. His record was 9 and 10, and I think Terry's, we were talking before the game, the White Sox are expecting this to be the year where they keep him healthy and see him uh, go out there in a big body, make over 30 starts. Here's the pitch. That's a strike on the outside corner. He made 28 starts a year ago. He's a fast worker, and he's a guy that they have monitored his innings, and that has uh, been the case here this spring because this is his first start this spring. He's pitched in some camp games for them but uh, they are uh, certainly easing him back into uh, things here we're just a couple weeks away from the start of the regular season so he will not have that many cactus league innings under his belt when the season begins right and then uh, we're going to count on the minor league innings that start piling up as the Angels are doing with the, some of their starters Here's Trout taking it off speed delivery and he is out looking. Ted Barrett called that pitch on the outside part of the plate to strike. So Trout is out and now with two gone. Here's Albert Pujols. Don, when he has that feel for that slider, he'll throw it any count. He'll take something off of it. Sometimes it is a wipeout type pitch and certainly right there with Narvaez behind the plate catching. More of a finesse approach on the wraparound back door. So here's Albert who has been hot ever since he returned to the Angel lineup. Pitches in there for a called strike. He has a little five game hitting streak here in Cactus Lake play. Seven for 17. That's a 412 batting average. Next pitch. He fouls that one back on the right side out of play. He lamped up with that fastball. Well located. Last year he better start against the Angels back in uh, April in Chicago did not get out of the first inning only a third of an inning allowing five earned runs six hits in 41 pitches and he was out of there. Here's the next delivery and that one is popped up foul over on the right side it's going to get back and out of play. Rondone was a first round pick of the White Sox that was back in 2014. Home plate umpire Ted Barrett just had a little discussion with him as he walked uh, in from the mound, did the pitcher. And as, as mentioned, too, he's we've seen the good and the bad. First time the Angels saw him back in 2015. Seven scoreless, only four hits in 107 pitches. Here's the next one on Albert, and that one is fouled back behind the plate. So the count, no balls, two strikes on Pujols. We have two outs, bottom of the first with no score. When the White Sox made Rodon the first round pick back in 2014, he was the third overall selection in that draft. That one is low. So it's one ball, two strikes, and they signed him to a big signing bonus coming out of college 
Back to club record signing bonus. He had a tremendous, remarkable college career with the strikeouts. He did. Here's the one two. And again, fouled back by Albert back to the screen. You can see what Verdon is trying to do in terms of uh, his body and delivery. It, keep it as clean as possible. Stay tall, push off, but mainly the separation with the hands, the stride, the arm slot. They want it all to keep it in one piece. And of course, add the innings, but uh, keep them healthy too. Here's the next one on Albert, and it's bounced through the right side. They had a shift on on the left side, and he hit it the opposite way. It bounces on out to the right fielder, Liriano. And Albert keeps on picking up hits. Two out single here. Luis Valbuena will be the next angel batter. Now it's all about placement. Good pitch by Rodon. He took something off of that changeup a lot, had a good tail action. And for Pujols, of course, got to have a big smile. Comes in hitting 417, Terry. The thing is, if you're hitting 200, that's an out. Somebody's going to be there yeah. somehow. But Albert's been swinging the bat well and staying on the ball very nicely. So here's Valbuena, his first time up. He's the cleanup man today, and he takes that one for a called strike. Valbuena has seen his share of left-handers here in camp. Been a good sign for him the way he stays in and of course to convince Mike Sosha and the staff that he can handle them known to really go out there and crush right handers keep an eye on base percentage and if you just anywhere respectable and decent against lefties and fight away you will earn yourself opportunities against lefties. One on one is the count on Valbuena. They do not have a shift on with Luis batting. And here's the next delivery. He took a big cut at that one and missed it. So it's one and two. Louis was looking for the tent in right field on that swing. He did not get cheated on Ooh, that swing. That You're leg, right. That leg is feeling good now, too. The left leg has some soreness for a few days. One two pitch, low and in. Two and two. We'll have another big crowd here today at Tempe Diablo. Yesterday's uh, crowd was the biggest one this spring, another sellout. And we had over 9,600 here, standing room only yesterday. And the last two uh, Angel games here at Tempe Diablo Stadium, we've had uh, 9,000 plus in each of them. And uh, the last two games have been sellouts. A lot of them right now are trying to find some shade. But it is packed. Here's the next delivery, a big cut at that one, and missing it is Valbuena struck him out. So both pitchers in the first inning have a couple of strikeouts, and neither team has scored as we hit to the second on the Angels Baseball Radio Network and Fox Sports West.
Sunday, Sunday afternoon baseball here at Tepe Diablo. Second inning we go, and first batter here for the White Sox will be Cody Ashe. He's their DH. He's had a good spring for them, trying to make their uh, club after signing with the White Sox. Remember the Philadelphia Phillies for a number of seasons. First pitch on him is in there for a strike. Ashe is on a minor league deal in camp here with the White Sox so no guarantees and the next delivery and that's a swing and a miss so far whatever he has been able to control Terry beyond playing time he's produced average on base percentage three home runs got seven RBIs and he's healthy he was hurt out of spring training last year there's the pitch on its way he takes that one for a ball it's now one ball two strikes Hit just 213 last year, 71 games with Philadelphia. And the 1 2 delivery. And he chases a high one there and misses it, struck him out. So Shoemaker struck out three of the four that he's faced. That's the first out here in the second. And Tyler Saladino, the third baseman today for the White Sox, will be the next batter. There's that fastball. He has enough on his splitter today, which he hasn't used a whole lot, but just to keep hitters aware that anything that comes up around the letters and above, they're going to be jumping on it. And at that time is when Matt Shoemaker's smart enough to go out there and amp it up a little bit more. So far, very good results. Here's the pitch. That's right in there for a called strike. Shoemaker's fourth start. He had pitched just nine innings so far this spring coming into today. Should be uh, somewhere around the 75 pitch limit for this start. And that one is low and outside. One and one. When asked about Mike Shoemaker this morning and how he's progressing, one thing that uh, manager Mike Sosha pointed out to was he does not take a day for granted. He, he wasn't talking only about baseball, of course. Sure, there's off speed. Good splitter there, and that one fooled Saladino. So Shoemaker's uh, jumping on all these hitters getting in front in the count. He's up one and two here on Saladino. And the one two that's a fastball it's lifted in the air into shallow right field towards the line under making the grab in shallow right is Cole Calhoun so the first five batters have all either struck out or hit a fly ball to Calhoun and with two away Matt Davidson will be the hitter and so forget this copyrighted broadcast presented by authority of Angels baseball may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form the accounts and descriptions of today's game May not be disseminated without the expressed written consent of Angels Baseball. Terry Smith, Jose Mota, and our producer engineer Jorge Sevilla with you from Tempe Diablo Stadium. Here's the next pitch, and yeah, that's popped up foul on the right side. Gonna have a chance in the fourth inning, Terry, to visit with Angels manager Mike Sosha in game. Down on those uh, outside the dugout spot. We've done that in the past in uh, spring training. That's always a neat feature that we like the uh, fans to get a chance to sample. Hear the Angels manager talking as the game is going on. That's it. Putting on signs, giving us a little strategy. I must say, this was Mike Soja's idea, by the way, about 10 years ago. Yeah. Manager slash producer. Can do that too. <laughs> There's one that's a little bit low. Two and one is the count. Producer, director, manager, Mike Sosha. That's what you do as a manager, right? <laughs> and here comes the 2 1 pitch. A little bit inside, ball three on Davidson. And Shoemaker Terry, and uh, you talk about reminders and not taking a day for granted, is also reminders of the minor leagues and how much time he had spent down there six years before he got a sniff of the big leagues. And here's the next pitch. This one is hit well in the center field. Going back on that one is Mike Trout still going back. Jumps up and he can't make the catch. He jumped a little bit too soon. The ball hit off the wall in dead center and going into third base and stopping there with a triple is Davidson. Well very interesting on this one. 
Ball took off way up there. Trout always kept track of it. And what we see is Trout, perhaps because he's fighting the sun, he's actually saying that ball was kind of tailing on me. Gets in a good spot to jump, but the ball was not going out of the ballpark. Yep. And at the very last minute, that ball came back towards his left as he took his rise away and lost it momentarily. And misjudged it. So Davidson is on on the triple. And here's the pitch. That one is fouled off on the left side. Well, we've seen Trout make so many spectacular catches out there in center field. And uh, we know very well, Jose, here in these spring training games, there are always issues for the outfielders on high fly balls here. And uh, that one there gave Trout some trouble, but it's bright and sunny. There's really not any clouds in the sky. And uh, Trout's still talking about it out there in center field. Yeah, he takes a lot of pride in that defense. He knows <laughs> he should have caught it. Yeah. In normal circumstances, of course, when he doesn't have to fight all the elements, which, of course, everybody fights here in Arizona with the pop-ups. Seen the trouble outfielders and infielders have had here on the left side of the field the last couple of days. So it's a one two count and the next delivery, and that is a called third strike. Yohan Mancata is out looking, and it turns out to be another two strikeout inning for Shoemaker. So they leave that runner at third, and we are headed to the bottom of the second scoreless here in Tempe on the Angels Baseball Radio Network at Fox Sports West. Second uh, scoreless game, Angels and the White Sox. Cameron Maben, Danny Espinosa, and the Pennington will be the batters for the Angels. Carlos Rodon is on the hill for Chicago. One of the things the White Sox did in the offseason, and it was one of the uh, big deals in the offseason, maybe the biggest of all, they traded uh, Chris Sale over to the uh, Boston Red Sox. That was the talk. Yeah. I mean, Chris Sale's name had been floating around since early last season. And then it got really hot around the trading deadline. Stay put. Boston Red Sox put together the best package. Some great prospects. And Sale is in Beantown. There's a the pitch. It's high. And I guess uh, talking about the Red Sox for a moment, they uh, will likely have Sale and David Price unavailable for the start of the season. They're both probably going to be on the DL 
Here's the pitch. That's in there for a called strike. Go figure. Two very durable lefties. Absolutely. Yeah. Over the years. But that deal for the White Sox when they made it with uh, Boston sending sail over there. Here's the next one on Maven. It's lifted in the air into right center. Diving, sliding, and making the catch on that one is Adam Engel. That was a nice play. He had to go to his left and right center. The center fielder makes the grab on that one. That's the first out. But the in making that deal, and the uh, White Sox had another one with the Washington Nationals, where they traded Adam Eaton over uh, to Washington during the offseason. Their farm system went from one of the worst to one of the best in just those two trades because they got a whole lot of prospects in uh, both of those deals. Quite a load, and uh, that's the talk around Chicago and the White Sox. Yes. The revamping of the farm system and some good players that they can incorporate and inject immediately into the big leagues. Here's the pitch, and that one is a little bit low. The guy out there at second base for them, Johan Moncada, is certainly a high-level prospect. Whether or not he's going to make their club uh, coming out of spring training is another story, but he's only 21 years old, and people are predicting a very bright future for him. There's a pitch outside. It's now 3-0 and on Espinosa. Moncada had a taste of the big leagues briefly with the Red Sox last season and he had a superb features all-star game on display every single one of those tools that he has yeah. speed power but if you're going to get a Chris Sale you're going to have to give up a, a prospect like that if you're the Red Sox that's the way it goes yeah. here's the 3-1 delivery this is popped up on the right side of the infield Davidson, the first baseman, will give way to Moncada. We were just talking about him. He'll make the catch a few feet on the outfield grass, not far from the first base area, and that's the second out. So two are gone, and Cliff Pennington will be the next batter. Terry, is the old saying, win now with established players or hope that these prospects develop? I mean, prospects haven't done anything in the big leagues. They, pro they you know, they project as a players are going to be steady for you and hopefully winning players, but you just never know. You take the short route. And that's one reason why you have a solid farm system. Here's Pennington at the plate. He is a switch hitter. He bets right-handed. He takes that off-speed pitch for strike one. Penny's having a good spring, hitting 333. And the next pitch, he slices that one foul down the right side. So it's no balls and two strikes. Fans, don't forget this spring, you can find your escape route off-road with great deals on a new Jeep. Head into your local Jeep dealer for the Jeep Spring Clearance event. It's going on now. So two strikes to count on Pennington. Two outs here in the second. No score. Angels and the White Sox. Carlos Perez, who's been swinging a hot bet, would be up next if the inning continues. And the two-strike delivery. That's cut out and miss. Chase one high and away. Struck him out, and the inning is over. Third strikeout for Rodon, and the Angels go down quietly here in the second. Third inning is coming up with no score here from Tempe on the Angels Baseball Radio Network and Fox Sports West.
In the top of the third inning, the bottom part of the batting order for the White Sox, Omar Narvaez, their catcher, will be stepping up, left-handed hitter. And he's having a good spring for them, hitting over 420 this spring. Here comes the first pitch. He takes it on the outside part of the plate. He figures to be their number one catcher this spring. When uh, we get to the start of the regular season, he's 25 years old. He did play in 34 games for the White Sox last year and hit 267. Here's the next pitch. And that's on the outside part of the play. He's looked at two pitches, and they've each been called strikes. Yeah, young Venezuelan catcher who really got the look last year because of the injuries under the plate catching combo for the White Sox. So made the most out of it. He comes in as a starter combined with Giovanni Soto whom the Angels had last year for some time before the injuries took a toll on Giovanni. But Giovanni is supposed to be splitting time with Narvaez this year. At one point they thought there was going to be some interest from the White Sox and Matt Wieters when he was still available. Yep. Here's the one two and this one is chopped on the right side of the infield. It's right at Espinosa and he throws it away. So he will be charged with an error. Boy that was a very routine play right there but the throw took off and Valbuena really had no shot to catch it. So an E4 on that play and Liriano the nine hole hitter will be the next batter. Oh you figure that was as routine as they come and Danny Espinosa playing behind the cut another five or six feet as he comes in and slices throws pretty much a cutter over to Valbuena. It's one thing Danny has of course and we keep talking about it that shortstop arm at times is a little hard to control. But he's also a guy that's made more starts at second base in the big leagues than at shortstop. So it's nothing new for him. So a gift base runner nobody out runner at first and the first pitch here on Liriano that one is in there for a strike. Here's a very interesting story. Reimer Liriano last year suffered multiple fractures to his face when he was hit by a pitch in spring training. Missed all of last season. Played some water ball. Happy to get his timing back in water ball and prove to everybody that he is back and healthy. Scary moment. Here's the next delivery and that one is a pitch that he swings and misses for a strike. As a result of uh, getting hit by that pitch he had concussion issues and as Jose mentioned he did not play at all last year. Twenty five years old. Here's the next delivery and that one is on the uh, outside part of the plate a little bit too low for a ball. Regular right fielder for the wide side supposed to be Avisail Garcia who's having a good spring. Overall, offensively, they are not hurting. Jose Abreu, established slugger. Timmy Anderson, exciting young shortstop who can really swing the bat and exciting offensive player. Todd Frazier, third base. There's the pitch that's taken by Liriano on the inside part of the plate. Got him looking. Another strikeout for Shoemaker. He's faced nine batters, and he has struck out five of them. He's got the movement going and the nice finish all the way around. Took something off of that one. Came right back over that inner third. Here's Engel, the center fielder. He went down swinging his first time up. Scoreless game, third inning, Angels and the White Sox. Ready to work his shoemaker and the pitch and a swing and a miss. Snap throw at first, just diving back safely goes Narvaez as Carlos Perez tried to gun him at first base. That was close. Angels catcher see the secondaries. Some guys trembling and not being too sure how quickly they need to get back, and they let him know very quickly, which also promotes a lot of awareness on your first baseman and your right fielders that need to back up those throws. Good job by Carlos and Martín Maldonado. All the same, pretty much. There's the next delivery. That one's a little bit low. I saw Angle come in and swing the bat immediately. And for Matt Shoemaker, it's pretty much a trend. As hitters get up there, they know they're going to be seeing something around the plate, and they are not afraid of swinging that first pitch. I mean, consider that last year when they made contact on that first pitch, 
he allowed a 354 average with six home runs. There's a cut and a miss on the next one to Angle, and now it's a 1 2 count. Angle is playing center field for the White Sox. They were hoping going into spring training that Charlie Tilson was going to be their opening day center fielder, a guy that they acquired during last season from the Cardinals, but he suffered a foot injury. And the way it looks now, Peter Borges is a pretty good bet to be their opening day center fielder with the White Sox. Here's the pitch. A little pop in his shallow left. That's going to drop in for a blue base hit. So the second hit of the day for the White Sox. They have runners on at first and second now with one gone. Everett Cabrera will be the next batter. And fans, don't forget to join the Angels April 7th and 8th for opening weekend at the Big A. The Angels will be taking on the Seattle Mariners. Fans in attendance will receive a wall calendar. It's courtesy of U.S. Bank while supplies last. For more information, visit angels.com slash promotions. So the batter is Cabrera. Shoemaker in his first trouble in this ball game with two on, one out. Here's the pitch. Popped foul to our left back and out of play. Everett Cabrera trying to resurrect his career. He was away from organized baseball all of last season. Played professionally, but he played in Nicaragua. And last time he was in the big leagues was a couple of years ago. Partially with Baltimore. Here's the pitch. And that one is a little bit low and away. One on one is the count. Switch hitter. Angels infield playing it at double play depth. Time called as Cabrera steps out of the batter's box. Some off the field issues have cost him to lose that status. This guy was an all star. Back in 2013, led the National League in stolen bases with 44. In 2012, getting a second chance. Here's the pitch, and he goes after that one and fouls it off to our left. Ricochets back down to the seats. Cabrera's been a stolen base champ in the past in the National League. 2012 season. And he's now 30 years old trying to resurrect his career he signed a minor league deal with the White Sox this past offseason Shoemaker has him down in the count and the next delivery that's a swing and a miss he got him with a split finger pitch struck him out another strikeout for Matt Shoemaker six of them against the first 11 batters two outs in the inning with any luck he would have been out of the inning but the error by Espinosa started the inning off the Angels second baseman and here's Melky Cabrera. Matt Shoemaker hitting that target right where Carlos Perez had set it up with that splitter. Well, the White Sox have Everest Cabrera and Melky Cabrera batting back to back in their lineup. They're not related. Here's the pitch. A uh, little flare in the left center. That's going to fall in for a base hit. It's going to get a run in. Trout's throw will be to second. They'll have him at the corners, scoring from second base. An unearned run is Narvaez, the catcher, and Melky Cabrera is given the White Sox a 1-0 lead. Well, Melky Cabrera described as a professional hitter. Both sides of the play just as dangerous. Same approach. Not falling behind here on... Matt Shoemaker gets something early in the count. There it is. Swing that first pitch, gets something you can handle, and just keeps it quite simple using the big part of the field. So here's Ashy as Shoemaker is still trying to get that final out in the inning, a run in. Matt 
Matt taking some time as he will come in from the stretch. There goes the runner at first. The pitch is high. The runner jams on the brakes and goes back to first. So yeah, Melky Cabrera <laughs> ended up going back to first base. There's something you don't see anymore. A walking lead. A true walking lead for Melky Cabrera at first base. A little Maury Wills action there. He thought about going, decided to hold up. And had he gone, he might have been thrown out the way the Angels catchers have been throwing out would-be base stealers. Here's the next pitch, uh, cut and a miss by Ashy. So the count's 0-2. Truemaker's strikeout piling up here against the White Sox in last season, recalling back in July 16th. A complete game shutout against the White Sox when he compiled 13 strikeouts. And he threw a total of 115 pitches. Did the shoe. Next pitch will be number 50 of the day for Shoemaker. He's way in front here on Cody Ashi. No balls, two strikes. Next pitch. And that one just missed a little bit inside. It seemed like Ted Barrow's ready to call that pitch. Yeah, that's it. As he did earlier against Moncada. Fastball running back over the plate. If you're a hitter taking that one with two strikes, you're going to hold your breath finding out what the call is by the umpire. And they say thank you. <laughs> yep. Here's the one two. That's drilled down the right field side. It's going to drop in a fair ball. It takes a bounce, hits off the wall. A run is scored. They'll have them at second and third. So Ashy with a two-strike RBI double. It's now 2-0 White Sox. That's what the White Sox want to see out of Cody Ashy. Continues to produce eight RBIs now. He gets a reprieve of that pitch he just missed out over the plate. Gets something out better and does not miss it. Sometimes the previous pitch will dictate a lot about what you need to do in the approach, and that's what he did. The pitch was just missing in off the plate. Same approach, stay close, and pretty much let the barrel of the bat dictate where that ball was going to go. So that's the third hit in the inning. The error is certainly factored into the scoring. Both of the runs unearned, and Shoemaker facing another batter, his seventh hitter to go against in this inning, and he misses high and away on Tyler Saladino. Flight out to right is first at bat. Here's the next delivery. Man, that's a fastball. A little high and away, ball two, two and oh. Tyler Saladino has a good grasp, perhaps, on the second base job for the White Sox here in the spring. He can play a little shortstop, playing third base today. Had a very strong second half last year, where he hit over 300. Next pitch, he cuts it that one and misses it. One of those players, scouts describe as quick to adjust, very good instincts. And you give him a glove and tell him to play baseball, he'll find a way to play like a natural at any position. Uh, he's a good defensive player, he has a very good arm. And he can play uh, really all four infield spots. There's another splitter that had him fooled. Back to back pitches, split finger fastballs, and it's now a 2 2 count. Chaladino from San Diego. So will Shoemaker come back with another splitter against him? Here's the 2-2 delivery, and he got him looking on the outside corner, struck him out, and the inning is over. Shoemaker strikes out the side in the inning, and he's already had seven strikeouts. And he got a couple of them looking in the inning, but they get a pair of runs. They're both unearned in the inning. Three hits, one error, and two runners left. Bottom of the third is next. It's 2-0 White Sox on the Angels Baseball Radio Network and Fox Sports West.
And it... We go to the bottom of the third inning. First pitch is in there. Carlos Perez is the angel batter. This is his first at bat of the ball game. And here's the next pitch. And that's a little bit low and away. One ball, one strike. Rodon uh, works fast. He doesn't take much time at all. And here's the next delivery. And that one is a little bit high. So it's two balls and one strike. Well, for a long time, the White Sox had probably the quickest worker in the game. That was Mark Burley as this pitch is outside. Ball three, three balls and one strike. So Rodon kind of taking a page out of Burley's book. And the 3-1 pitch. It's a pop-up on the first base side. Davidson is straddling the foul line. Now he's going to give way to the second baseman, and Moncada will make the catch on the outfield grass and fair territory. Not far from the line. That's the first out. Let's pause 10 seconds for stations to identify themselves on the Angels Baseball Radio Network. Terry Smith along with Jose Mota, our producer engineer is Jorge Sevilla. The 2-0 White Sox lead in the third and the pitch. This is a ball chopped down the third base side. It is stuck there by Saladino and he will throw out his third base counterpart today, Caleb Coward, who was first ball swinging. That was a nice play by Saladino. He smothered that ball as he went a step or two to his left. And boy, was he cat quick. He got up, fired, and got Coward easily. So two are gone, six in a row now, retired by Rodon. And here's Cole Calhoun, his second time up. And here's the pitch. That's in there for a called strike. Next inning, when we get to the fourth, Jose will be seated alongside Mike Sosha and will uh, get a new perspective of the game from the Angels manager in game as that one is cut out of missed and the count is 0 and 2 on Cole Calhoun. Trout would be up next. Here's the next pitch on Cole. He chops that one over the mound. Out near second, though, it's going to be stopped by the shortstop, Everett Cabrera. He will throw to first. Calhoun is retired, and the Angels go down quickly here in the bottom of the third. Fourth inning is coming up. 2-0 White Sox on the Angels Baseball Radio Network and Fox Sports West.
We go to the top of the fourth inning. Matt Shoebaker still working for the Angels. Matt Davidson, Yuan Moncada, and Omar Narvaez will be the batters. Six, seven, and eight. Shoemaker uh, getting ready for inning number four today. And here's his first pitch. And that one is low and outside. Jose Mota is downstairs where the Angels uh, coaching staff is seated just outside the Angels dugout on the first base side. He's with Angels manager Mike Sosha right now. And here's the next pitch. And that's a little bit low and away. Mike, let's get to business with Matt Shoemaker and what you've seen so far in the ball coming out of his hand. Uh, he's really pitching well, Jose. Uh, his first pitch strike ratio is incredible. Uh, we cracked the door open, obviously, last inning, and they capitalized with two on runs. But uh, he's spotting his fastball well. His split's really sharp. This is uh, this is where we're going to need him here in uh, you know a couple weeks. So it's good to see it. Here's the next delivery. It's chopped on the left side. Diving stop by Coward. Gets up. He has the great arm, and he'll easily get Davidson. That was not an easy play. Coward uh, doing a fine job out number one. Well, Mike, fine-tuning defense and run prevention is big. How big is to see something like that from the youngster at third base? That's huge. Uh, you know, Caleb is, is really as good as there is down at third base. He can pick it, Hosey. Uh, good range, great arm. Uh, we're going to play good defense this year, and, uh, you know, uh, Danny made that little, uh, that bad throw in the last inning, but for the most part, we're turning our double plays, playing good defense, and play like that's huge leading off an inning, obviously, for, uh, you know, for Shu. As we talk third base, how far along is Yanel Escobar? There's a little pop behind the plate off the bat of Moncada, and making a nice running catch back near the screen is Carlos Perez. You know, Escobar, how far is he? He's close. Uh, you know, I think if this was a regular season game, we could have played him, but we have the off day tomorrow. We'll give him uh, today to get treatment, tomorrow get treatment, and uh, hopefully play on Tuesday. Mike, how tough is that play for a catcher we just saw there? That's not very tough, to be honest with you. <laughs> That's a little pop-up bump, but the toughest thing, especially in Arizona, is finding the ball. Uh, you know, uh, first you look for a bunt, and it's not on the ground. Obviously, you're drawn up into the air, and, uh, uh, you know, sometimes those things, uh, you know, are, are, are tough to, uh, to locate, but um, uh, Carlos did a good job, got to it easy. So here is the catcher, Narvaez, with two outs, no one on. Shoemaker now at 60 pitches this afternoon. Shift on on the right side of the infield. First one uh, breaking ball low. One ball, no strikes. And the 1 0 delivery that's lifted in the air foul down the left side out of play. Mike, with your notes and things you have reminding yourself, uh, address to the team uh, group, what? goes it ha goes into taking your notes and what you're going to be addressing with them well we have uh, you know we have a great coaching staff and their expertise is outfield infield base running uh, obviously pitching and catching and uh, you know each uh, you know, each uh, each guy will, will take notes on his um, specific uh, responsibility and I'll, I'll keep it on the game and we put them together after the game review video and just try to get these guys as fundamentally sound as we can Here's the 2 1 delivery. And again, fouled back right behind the plate out of play. He used the expression ball coming out of his hand, one way or the other. When can you tell? What are you looking for to describe the ball's coming out of his hand well or not all that well? Well, you can see you can see the release point. You see the carry through the zone. Uh, Shoe's got good action on his two seamer, so the ball is definitely coming out of his hand the way uh, you like to see it on the fastball. Uh, you see the good arm speed on the split and the slider, and you put all that together, and uh, you know, that's what makes uh, Shoe tough. And uh, we're looking for a big year from him this year. Narvaez just fouled another pitch off, so he's hanging in there with the count even at two and two. Home plate umpire Ted Barrett's going to get some new baseballs. Jose Mota visiting with Angels manager Mike Sosha as we give you a little different perspective of what's going on today here in Tempe. And we'll see what gives on the 2 2 delivery as Shoemaker is set on its way and he misses high so it's a full count Mike you're busy in positioning and getting to know more from your coaches what's important here in the way things line up considering the count of three two yeah we have uh, obviously we have uh, a lot of data on percentages and probability of where guys will hit the ball in, in certain counts whether they're ahead or they're behind the count and uh, 
Uh, that's where our freighter Griffin, who will be back with us on Tuesday, has a, a great understanding of. And right now, Dino Ebel's doing it with Keith Johnson, and they do a great job. We practice it, and uh, right now is the time to really implement it. So these guys will get comfortable with it in the next couple weeks before we start. On a 3-2 pitch, it was outside on Narvaez, so he is at first base with a two-out walk. And Terry, keep in mind, there's a time when you want to keep an eye on Mike Sosh and all the things that's going on right now between he and his catcher. So, Mike, what do we got here in terms of what you're trying to address with a pitcher, catcher, and holding the runner? This is just really trying to control the running game, and uh, there are little, some tools we have from uh, Shu Al Longo hold the ball. Uh, if we want to if we want to throw to first is, or, or hold and step off to see if a runner uh, has any activity, and uh, Right now, it's a very low probability of a, of a steal, but you still have to go through the sequence so uh, so our guys get used to it. On ball, no strikes on Reimer Liriano, the nine-hole hitter. Shoemaker struck him out looking back in the third inning, last inning. Here's the 1-0. Uh, swing and a miss. A uh, good splitter right there. And the count, 1-1. One one. Engel, the top of the batting order, would be up next if the inning continues. White Sox two, Angels no scores. A pickoff toss, and just getting back goes the base runner, the uh, catcher, Narvaez. He's increasing his lead a little bit, although uh, not a big running thread he's not going and the pitch that's fouled off right over by the uh, area where the Angels coaching staff is seated Jose Terry, where's that look screen? out didn't we see a screen here recently that's right look out surprise Mike and when you go through these signs and I'll just follow you along here with Carlos how much are they customized to the type of move he has and how quick he is with his feet. That all comes into play. Right now we're going to throw over just for practice and see uh, Gava Buena first, just for uh, just, just you know just when she's going to have to do it during a regular game. And uh, uh, it's definitely the the probability of running starts with the pitcher, his leg kick, and then it goes under the catcher's arms, and you put all the times together and you get an idea if they're going to run or not. So uh, yeah, there's no doubt a pitcher has a lot to do when it uh, when it comes to how much attention you have to pay to a runner throwing the ball over and varying your looks. You're watching on Fox Sports West. You saw Mike Socia flashing some signals there, uh, chatting with Jose. Here's the pitch to the plate, and that one is a little bit inside. Terry, keep in mind, this is an ongoing thing with Mike and the timing with Carlos. Carlos knows exactly when to pick it up. Mike goes through the routine and you pass it on to the pitcher so that sequence and tempo of the game stays all the same for all everybody involved including your first baseman. I'm trying to see if I can read those signs Jose never <laughs> two and two is the count and here's the next pitch uh, wave and a miss and another splitter gets Liriano and the inning is over. Shoemaker has racked up eight strikeouts in his four innings of work. Retires three out of four here in the top of the inning. Bottom of the fourth coming up 2-0 Chicago on the Angels Baseball Radio Network and Fox Sports West.
As we get ready to go to the bottom of the fourth, Angels trail the White Sox 2-0. Two runs, four hits for Chicago. No runs, one hit for the Angels. And here in the top of the fourth, Mike Trout will lead things off. Jose is still visiting with Angels manager Mike Sosha. They'll continue uh, their conversation this half inning here in the bottom of the fourth. First pitch to Trout. He jumped on that pitch but fouls it off down the left side for strike one. Mike, how nice is it for you to get this view on every day basis to watch the best player in the game in action? Oh, this is an unbelievable, Jose. Uh, you know, for us guys who have been in the game a long time, uh, you love it down in the field. And when you get to see someone as talented as Mike, uh, you don't take it for granted. And, um, uh, you know, uh, he's a big part of our club and what we need to do. And uh, the more you see him on an everyday basis, all the things that he does, it just, uh, it just keeps reinforcing why he's the best player in the game. How much growth have you seen in maturity, even on the way he gets ready for a season year to year here in spring training leading into the season? Well, experience uh, is, is a tool, and uh, Mike's using that experience of how he prepares for a season. Um, what he does in spring, the range of at-bats he needs, uh, you know, how many times he needs to be active on the bases. Um, as, as he's played year after year, uh, he'll come with things that he needs in spring, and uh, it's really easy for us to implement it. He will be ready to play. He's always ready to play, and uh, he's a special guy. Mike Trout now in his sixth oh, wait, full season, and on the 3-1 uh, delivery, he takes ball four. Well, we saw pitches. the other signs before with the catcher, and uh, Mike Sosha now going to go to work with Ron Renneke uh, relaying these signs. Talk about the importance of the signs and the sequence with your catcher, keeping that tempo. How about on the offensive side? How big is that? Oh, it's huge. Uh, you know, Ron and I have been together a long time, and great to get him back there at third base. Uh, he, he's, he's the best in the business. He's got great timing, uh, understands every, everything about third base coach, uh, controlling the running game and a lot of things. And uh, so uh, he's, you know, he's, he's easy for me to work with. First pitch on Albert missed inside for ball one, and that brings the catcher Narvaez out to have a word with Rodon. As you're adjusting the signs throughout spring training, how often do you have to refresh and then stop again and start again, especially now the guys switch teams uh, so often? Uh, we'll, we'll go through. Uh, we're on our second set of signs already this spring. We'll change them again. You have to change them up frequently. And, um, uh, and uh, then when you make your last cuts, you'll make another adjustment to your signs. Here's the next pitch. And Albert takes that breaking ball on the inside part of the plate called strike. Will Albert Pujols have the freedom with he and Mike Trout to have on their own a run and hit or hit and run? Uh, well, I don't want to give away some of the things we like to do, but there's no doubt that Albert, uh, he will put the ball in play and, uh, and Mike will try to steal bases. Mike, that's a good answer right there. <laughs> Terry, you remember those answers? <laughs> Jose, you're trying to get some uh, top secret information out of the Angels manager today. <laughs> Two and one on Albert, and oh, there's hey. ball three. So all of a sudden, uh, Rodon, who hadn't walked any in the first three innings, has walked one to start this inning off, and he's behind three and one on Pujols. Like how pleasing is it to know that Pujols is not a guy that you have to worry about when it comes down to being on the field. Once he said, I want to play, I'm getting ready for the season. He's amazing. Uh, 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 the distance he's come just in getting healthy is unbelievable. And, uh, you know, he's he's uh, he's worked so hard to, to get back after surgery, and um, he's uh, he's he's uh, he needs about another. It seems like another 10 at bats, and he'll be locked in. He's really hitting the ball hard this spring. Albert just lifted a fly ball to center field that Adam Engel made the catch on. Got it a little bit off the end of the bat. Still gave it a pretty good ride, but a routine play. And here's Valbuena now with one out and Trout on at first base. You saw Valbuena from the other side off, and uh, what does he bring into your ball club? Uh, you know, Louis, uh, he can just he can just hit, uh, especially right-handed pitching. Um, you know, he's switched over to first base. Um, he's uh, he's really a good defender, and uh, he's going to be a poor left-handed bat in the middle of our lineup. Lefty lefty matchup here and the pitch fouled back behind the plate. How much does that give you an idea on handling a left hander on the mound leading into the regular season on his approach not necessarily based on results. 
Well, you know, I think as a left-handed hitter, and I was left-handed hitter, uh, left-handed pitching has a tendency to get you locked in, and I think you want to, uh, you know, although it might not be what it might not be what your forte is, uh, there's no doubt that uh, guys like uh, Valbuena and Cole, who will play every day, uh, hit off of lefties, uh, get a chance to see lefties once in a while. Uh, it just has a way to shorten your swing and helps you to to find your rhythm. And uh, Luis has been hitting the ball well off of lefties so far this spring. 101 on Valbuena and the next pitch breaking ball low two and one the count to two nothing White Sox lead Angels batting bottom of the fourth inning here in Tempe Cameron may been waiting on deck here's the next pitch it's right. popped back foul just above us back and out of play so two and two the count. This is Rodon's first start this spring. He's made 58 pitches, and you might think, well, boy, that's pretty left for a guy making his first start. But he had been pitching in some controlled situations in their uh, camp. First Cactus League game for him. There goes Trout. Good jump. Pitch a strike for the strikeout. Throw to second is way late. And that'll be a stolen base for Mike Trout. So Valbuena is out looking, but Trout has his stolen base. He's at second, and Maben will be the batter. Well, Mike, uh, he's up to 30 stolen bases last year. He says he'd like to steal a little bit more. What was influential in getting him back in the running game last season? He just got comfortable with it. Uh, you know, sometimes, uh, you know, uh, there was a lot more attention paid to Mike after he came on board and stole, you know, uh, you know, 40 bases, the 40 plus bases, and then backed it up another 33. Uh, uh, and and I think that um, you know he he had to try to reconnect with that, and he has. And uh, you know, when when he gets an opportunity like he did last year, uh, there's no doubt he's going to try to you know take advantage of it. That was Trout's third stolen base this spring, three for three. Maven at the plate takes a strike, so Trout's the runner at second. Two outs, Angels trying to get on the scoreboard here. Hit would likely bring in Trout. Maybe just two for 23 this spring, but the two hits came yesterday, and he uh, cuts and misses that one. You've talked about the approach and not necessarily looking at the results from Cameron Maben. Where is he right now in terms of timing, making contact, and so we just get away from the results right now? Yeah, he was just missing some pitches earlier. Uh, his last, obviously, yesterday, he really had a good day. Uh, when he's in tune with using the whole field, he's a really good hitter, and that's what he got back to, and hopefully he'll keep it going. 0-2, oh, he reaches it down and fouls it off right side, backing out of play. Highly admired by so many former managers, former teammates, on what he brings to your clubhouse. What have you noticed? Uh, Cam's a, a great guy, uh, loves to play the game. Uh, you know, he moved to left field because he knows Mike Trout's here and he's working hard to become, uh, as he puts it, he wants to be the best left fielder in baseball. And uh, you know, we have really good clubhouse, good chemistry, and uh, he's, he's a big part of that. Maybe didn't ask for time. Now he's back in the box. White Sox do not have any action in their bullpen down the left side. Angels looking for a two out hit. Angels have had a lot of success this spring in situations like this, and that one is high and away, one and two. That must be something, Jose, that Mike Socia has liked this spring, the way the Angels have uh, scored with two outs, and especially the way the Angels have scored late in ball games this spring. He's pretty tight approach for a long time with Dave Hansen and Paul Sorrento, yes. Here's the one two. Oh, Breaking ball, he takes it low. Two and two. Status on Matt Shoemaker, where he is, sees over 70 pitches, and what do you expect from here on? Yeah, he's not. Uh, we will we'll, 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 uh, let him go out and see how the first hitter goes, and uh, we'll have somebody warming up to, to pick him up if he can. Uh, right now, it's important for him to get up five times, so we'll be able to accomplish that today and uh, just see uh, see how, how much stamina he has as he gets through uh, the first hitter. And, uh, you know, we won't push him uh, past 80, you know, 80, 85 pitches. So. Here's a breaking ball that froze. Maven got him looking, and that will end the inning. Thank you very much, Mike. Always. All right, Jose. All right, uh, Jose Mota. Nice visit this fourth inning with Angels manager Mike Socia. We've completed four. The fifth is next, and it's still 2 0 White Sox on the Angels Baseball Radio Network and Fox Sports West.
We go to the fifth inning, 2 0 White Sox. Adam Engel, their leadoff man, will lead off this fifth inning. Fans, don't forget, join the Angels all season long. Enjoy postgame Saturday night fireworks shows presented by Wells Fargo. For more information on the Saturday night fireworks, visit angels.com slash promotions. Here's the first pitch from Shoemaker, and it's a little bit low for ball one. One ball, no strikes. Angels infield is backed up across the middle, across from the bases at the corners, and the next pitch taken for a called strike. So it's one and one. Angels singled and scored in the third. That's when the White Sox got their two runs, and both of those runs were unearned. Here's the next delivery, and that one is low two and one. Heard Mike Sosha mention last half inning the shoemaker would throw anywhere from 80 to 85 pitches today so he's now at 75 and the next one that's lifted in the air in the gap in left center field that ball's hit well out in left center it bangs off the base of the wall trout will play it back in stopping at second base is Engel and he is there with the second hit of the day a leadoff double so no way Trout or Mabin could flag that one down. And now Everett Cabrera will be the next hitter. Fifth hit for the White Sox. Everett Cabrera, two strikeouts against Shoemaker. He's also struck out Liriano, their right fielder, twice. And he has eight of them so far through his four full innings of work and at least one strikeout in every inning and here's the pitch that's outside and misses ball one so one ball no strikes Jose has gotten back upstairs from being down on the field near the Angels dugout Enjoyed that with uh, Mike Socia, Jose. Mike's always very generous with that time here in spring training, no doubt. There's a ground ball base hit that's going to roll through in the right field, and then a snap throw back to first base. The batter Cabrera got back, so they have runners at the corners. Engel, the uh, runner at second, only uh, moved up one base there, and actually one. Everett Cabrera made contact on that one. He was starting to head back to second, so. He did not get a real good read on that. I was thinking maybe the ball was going to be stopped by Valbuena. Now we see Mike Socia going out to the mound, and sure enough, he is out there to make a pitching change. So we will have a break in the action. When we get back, we'll tell you who's coming in to take over for Shoemaker. As he leaves, it's 2-0 White Sox here in the fifth inning. Pitching change coming up on the Angels Baseball Radio Network and Fox Sports West.
right-hander Kirby Yates will take over for Matt Shoemaker. Yates will appear in Game 7 this spring. His numbers are good. A win in relief. No losses. ERA 1.50. And in six innings, he's allowed just two hits, one run, one walk, seven strikeouts. Opponents are hitting 105 against them. He's bidding to win a spot in the Angels' bullpen, and he certainly hasn't hurt his cause here in the times that we have seen him in action. He is on the Angels' 40-man roster, and he was with the Yankees last season, 41 games with New York. He does have the strikeout in him, and the Angels could use one right here for, of course, this is kind of a situational approach here by Mike Socha, and this is all planned out. If he needed to bring him, when does he get to get a good look at what Kirby Yates can implement immediately against a very good hit like Melky Cabrera? So the numbers on Shoemaker, four innings, six hits, two runs unearned, the two on bases property. Matt walked one, struck out eight. No outs, runners at the corners. Beach trying to keep the White Sox off the scoreboard here. Tough situation as he delivers and the pitch. That's a called strike on Melky Cabrera. Pitch caught the outside corner. Yates will throw the basic pitches. Fastball, slider, curve, and changeup. And time called as Melky Cabrera steps out of the box. Boy, Yates was giving Cabrera, Everest Cabrera, the base runner at first, the stare down over there at first base. Now everyone appears to be ready. Here's the pitch. And that's outside ball two. Oh, glad you bring that up. New in the system with the many things that Mike Socia just explained to us that he likes to do with his pitchers and trying to mix in. He's finding a little bit more about Yates and holding runners and timing and everything involved with what the organization, which is of course new to him, likes to implement in these types of situations. Next delivery, and it's fouled back to our left upstairs and out of play. So as Mike Sosha explained, throw over, slide step, hold the ball, hold and step off, pitch out, pick off, all those things that you have to keep in mind and keep coordinating with your catcher to make sure nothing is missed and you don't deliver a pitch and groom a pitch where you're not supposed to. Gates is set, next delivery, and again fouled back, almost the same spot as the last one. So still a couple strikes here on Melky Cabrera. He drove in the White Sox first run of the day. Gates is ready. He takes his time out there working from the stretch. Very deliberate. And now he'll toss over to first base. And back goes Everest Cabrera. Angels in action here. Taking on the Southsiders of Chicago. The White Sox. Angels are done as far as playing the Cubs this spring. Will not face them during the regular season, but we'll have some matchups against the White Sox. Here's a ground ball through the left side in between Coward and Pennington. That one will bounce on out to the left fielder, Maven. That's going to be an RBI hit, the second one of the day for Melky Cabrera. And now it's 3-0 White Sox. That's what Melky Cabrera has been doing for many, many years. Quickly adjusting to the way he's being pitched to. Taking a peek at the defense and slapping the ball the other way. Nothing too fancy and trying to muscle up and make it a bigger score. But getting out of his elements, he just really does stay within himself. And he's been doing it for many years. So that run goes against Shoemaker. It's the first earned run against him today. And the batter now is Cody Ashey. He's had an RBI double today. And the pitch. He takes that one low and inside.
Yates is ready. Here's the next pitch. And that's a little bit high with the fastball. 2-0. Kirby Yates replacing uh, Matt Shoemaker. Both of the Angel pitchers were undrafted after their uh, amateur careers, but have each made it to the big leagues. And the pitch, and that one is in there for a called strike. Yeah, we were talking earlier about how much time Matt Shoemaker spent on the other side here of Tempe Diablo Stadium. Looking for that parking lot, for that minor league facility into the towers here at Tempe Diablo and Terry hoping that someday he was going to be the one here inspiring others on the other side and there he is doing exactly that. Here's the next pitch and that one is tip foul back behind the plate. Six years for Matt Schumacher before he got a chance. He talked about a tough road as you mentioned undrafted yep. asked for a chance just to sign professionally. Kirby Yates out there somewhat of a similar story he had a tie in though with one of the angel uh, teammates of his now Cole Calhoun those two were uh, junior college teammates everyone is ready the counts even and the 2 2 delivery and that is low and inside so it's a full count here on Ashy. Well, Yates is one of those guys, and there are a bunch of them that are kind of on the bubble right now to get a bullpen spot going into the start of the season. Yeah, that list is pretty deep. Very deep. There goes the runner, Cabrera. He's on the move, and the pitch is fouled back behind the plate. So it's still three balls, two strikes. You have Yates, you have Parker, you have Adams. Yeah, Ramirez, I'll say that everybody is on the bubble. These are the options Mike Soja is dealing with. You got Morin. Of course, you got Alvarez as part of the mix. Backhand with Pedrosian and Bailey. So a 3-2 count. And a pickoff toss over there at first base. Melky Cabrera goes back. They have Everett Cabrera on at third. They also have two Giovanni Sotos on this team. One's a pitcher, one's a catcher. It's a nice battery. And uh, they've each played some games for the White Sox, and maybe uh, you could assume they had a battery of Giovanni Soto pitching to the catcher, Giovanni Soto. And there's a swing and a miss. The runner breaks for second. The throw gets away at second base, and the White Sox are going to get a gift run right there. So coming in and scoring will be Everest Cabrera. The guy who broke from first was Melky Cabrera, and the throw got away in second, so he moves on to third, and now it's 4 nothing Chicago. It's one of those unfortunate plays where shortstop Cliff Pennington had trouble again in finding the glove along with that throw. Throw was a little bit short. You can see the frustration on Pennington right after that play and knowing that he needed to stop that play, stop the ball. As the ball sailed to the right side on catcher Carlos Perez. When Cabrera was on the move, the pitch was strike three on Ashy, so he was retired, but they got a run in on that play on the strikeout. And at the play now is Saladino, and the pitch on him, he takes ball one, it's one and oh. So a stolen base and error bringing in Everest Cabrera. It's the second time in three games actually that we've seen uh, Pennington have trouble with the receiver's throws. One of them hit the bag on the line and he was not able to handle it yeah. or get the glove there on time. You can always tell infield, especially the veteran ones that know the importance of every single play like that and how much work is put into. So the uh, second run in the inning, fourth in the game for the White Sox. That goes against Shoemaker as well. And here's the next delivery with the infield in. That pitch is cut on, fouled off on the right side by Saladino. One ball, two strikes. There's a lot to be learned even in spring training and in drills, especially on the carry that a catcher has or might change from year to year. 
or throughout the season on how you go out there, set your feet early to stop throws and, of course, to get your feet and your glove in good spots, good positions. Here's the uh, pickoff toss over to third base, and boy, uh, the Angels nearly uh, got away with one over there at third base. Yates had to throw the ball over there, and he did. It was a play that was on. Yeah. You know? And uh, Melky Carrera didn't, wasn't even off the bag. Here's the one-two pitch. That's a liner into left. That's going to fall in for a base hit. Another run will score. Saladino has an RBI single. And now the White Sox are up 5 nothing. So Matt Davidson will be the next batter. And Yates has struggled since coming in here in this inning. He's given up a couple of hits. One of the runs in the inning off of him. And the next batter is Davidson. Fans, don't forget to join the Angels for spring training here at Tepe Diablo Stadium. In uh, five days on March the 24th, the Angels will be taking on the Seattle Mariners. Fans will enjoy a post-game concert performance by Gavin DeGraw. Visit angels.com slash promotions for uh, ticket information. Runner goes. The throw to second a little bit late. So the White Sox are aggressive here in this inning. They've stolen another base. And they have a runner at second now with one out. They're off and running. The Angels have been so good in throwing attempt to base fillers out. It's the bases. And on this one, give it all to the great job by Saladino at first base, starting with a good lead, quick step, and getting it all off of the pitcher. Here's the pitch, and that one is low. Two balls and no strikes is the count. And here's the next delivery. Uh, swing and a miss. Two and one the count. That shoemaker went four innings, as we mentioned earlier. Officially gives up four runs. Only two of the runs were earned against him. There's a pitch that's in there for a called strike. Two and two the count. Gates has uh, labored here since coming in. He's already thrown 20 pitches. And he is working at a very slow pace right now as well. Here's the next pitch. That's low and inside. Three and two. Well, we mentioned with the Angels seemingly having so many relievers on the bubble for a few of the remaining bullpen spots that every time one of these guys comes into a game now, you know they have to feel that type of situation. They know you don't have to tell a guy uh, if he's on the bubble or not. They all if know. we're saying it, they must know it. They know where they stand. They see the bodies disappearing week after week, every couple of days from the temporary lockers that were at one point part of the Angels clubhouse and part of the Major League clubhouses all over. They know the bodies that are left and what's at stake. They know they're fighting for a, a major league job and the pitch, and there's a swing and a miss. He comes back and gets Davidson, so a strikeout. Uh, it's two of them in the inning here for Yates, the two outs that he's recorded, and uh, now the batter is going to be Moncada, who uh, so far today has shown that he likes to be aggressive at the plate. He hasn't seen very many pitches here in his first two at bats today. A strikeout looking and a pop out to the catcher. A promising prospect now, property of the White Sox. The reports out of the Boston Camp Chris Sales just fine. 
Last pitch on March 16th, and Chris Sale said, not too sharp. Couldn't locate the fastball. He allowed uh, three runs, seven hits in four innings, and <laughs> he was pretty upset at himself. And we know the competitor that Chris Sale is. We got to know him when he first got called up, Terry, and he was truly upset on not covering first base on a play in spring training that cost him to stay out there longer in a couple of runs. And uh, it's Chris Sale being Chris Sale, fiery, competitive, and he is going to be just fine health-wise. In fact, Boston received news also that uh, Drew Pomeranz had to come out of a game after two innings. And he pitched today. Tightness in his left triceps. Also appears that uh, it's going to be day-to-day -day and not too serious. Here's the pitch on Moncada, and he lifts a high fly ball deep to right field, and it is gone. Out by the Angels' bullpen. The young 21-year-old second baseman has hit a home run. That's his third one this spring for the White Sox, and their lead gets bigger. It's now seven to nothing. Oh yes, he loves to swing the bat. There is that talent, that power, that torque on display. Uh, a ball that pretty much left that bat with tremendous speed right out of it. Great angle and a great follow through. And Moncada. Slow at first couple of at bats, find something nice and easy to get to and does not waste it. There's that talent with the power, the speed, the built. 15 home runs last year for the youngster who seems to have in front of him a very bright future. Cuban native who signed with the Red Sox after he fleed Cuba, got a signing bonus of over 31 million dollars and then was uh, traded in that uh, Chris Sale deal during the offseason now property of Chicago so at the plate now is the catcher this is Narvaez he is the eighth batter up in the inning seven nothing to score Chicago it's unfortunate Kirby Yates brought in solid numbers coming into today 1.5 ERA through six games seven strikeouts only a walk one run allowed and just like that a couple of mistakes and he's paying a hefty price Angels infield is showing the three man shift on the right side next delivery and the count goes to two and one on their bias. Here's the next delivery that's lifted foul on the left side back and out of play. So two and two is the count. One name we cannot forget about Terry is Cody Eagy, who has worked seven and one third scoreless innings across eight relief appearances. Wiley staying in the mix. Yeah. And the Angels projecting to carry left hander Jose Alvarez, whom everybody knows how dependable he is. But uh, Cody Higgy making a nice run for himself and a nice case here. See if there could be a pair of left handers in the bullpen. Next pitch. This is chopped on the right side. This should end the inning. Throw by Espinosa will easily get Narvaez, and that'll do it. But the White Sox score more here in the inning. They score five times in the inning, and they have a 7 nothing lead as we go to the bottom of the fifth on the Angels Baseball Radio Network and Fox Sports West.
So we go to the bottom of the fifth inning and a pitching change for the White Sox. Matt Perk will take over for the uh, starter. And that was Carlos Rodon who in his first appearance this spring did a good job for the White Sox. Gave up one hit in four innings. No runs. And he allowed one walk and in the strikeout department looks like he finished up with five. As Mike Sosa told me between innings there he Rodon was on his game and free and easy nice delivery staying tall over that rubber and really was playing catch with Narvaez behind the plate. So Danny Espinosa is the batter a game in which the Angels trail at seven nothing here in the bottom of the fifth just one hit for the Halos and here's the pitch that one from Perk is a ball to count one ball no strikes Matt Perk last name spelled P U R K E and he was in 12 games last year for Chicago ball in relief had some control problems in his brief time in the big leagues pitched 18 innings last year there's a pitch in there for strike one one the count. Danny Espinosa batting for just the second time. He popped out to second base his first time up. And here's the pitch. That one's ripped into left field, but reaching up and making the catch on it is Melky Cabrera. That ball got on top of him before he knew it, and he had a stretch up with the glove hand to make the catch on that one for the out. It's a nice pass to the baseball by Danny Espinosa. Switch hitting could be problematic sometimes in spring training if you don't see enough lefties, especially. You know, you're always going to see right handers, but to see Danny got enough at bats split between righty and lefty, and from the right side, he is looking really good and still trying to find more contact from the left side. He's got quite a few strikeouts. The Pennington, the batter, tips that one foul right by home plate. Pennington Perez who waits on deck and Coward have all hit just once today and the White Sox have eight of their nine batters who have hit three times a piece already in this game. So that would tell you that uh, you might be looking at kind of a lopsided score and that's exactly the case. It's seven nothing Chicago here in the fifth. And the pitch that's a little bit low. One on one is the count. Angels will be off tomorrow. And then we'll resume Cactus League play Tuesday in Goodyear against the Cincinnati Reds. G.C. Ramirez, who uh, used to be with the Reds, will uh, make the start for the Angels against them. And there's a pitch that misses a low and inside. Two and one is the count on Pennington. Which continues used to tell you that Mike Soch is still wants to see J.C. Ramirez stretched out. Then on Wednesday, the Angels, uh, Mike Soch announced there'll be three different big league starters on different mounds because of the arrangements they have on that day in the opponents. There's a little pop into right field. That's going to drop in the throw by the right fielder, Liriano. The first was pretty close, but Pennington does leg out that outfield single. On uh, Wednesday, the Angels will play Texas here. We'll have a team going to Peoria with Seattle. And then there'll be a major league pitcher making a start on the minor league side. Well, Ronald Liriano showing that arm. Yeah. And so glad that uh, Cliff Pennington came out of the box and sped up as he approached first base. He took notice of it thanks to Keith Johnson, the first base coach. Yeah, this coming Wednesday is a split squad day for the Angels. They're only one this spring. Here's a pitch taken for a strike by Carlos Perez. Nothing and one is the count. Which is a plus considering now that in Florida and in Arizona, there's a split squad every day due to the number of teams. It's uneven. Here's the next pitch. That one is low. One and one is the count. Perk 
Getting adjusted on the rubber and looking in for the sign as he is squaring off here against Carlos Perez. Next delivery. That one is taken for ball. Two and one is the count. And Perk pitched for the White Sox for a brief time last season. It was his first taste of major league action. Called him up from Triple A Charlotte last year. And here's his next delivery. And that's in there for a called strike. Two and two. wearing the eyeglasses out there on the mound. He delivers. There goes the runner. The pitch is missed. Throw down to second and a close play. Safe is the call at second base. Perez is down on strikes though. So that's the second out. Pennington has the stolen base. There's an argument uh, requesting there to just consider once again if there's any type of interference from the batter. It was coming from Rick Renteria from the third base dugout to home plate umpire Ted Barrett. Yeah, it was kind of a awkward throw there by the catcher Narvaez, but in the follow through by Carlos too. Yeah. Nothing uh, changed up there. The play stands as called and the stolen base for Pennington. So here's Coward batting and the first pitch on him. It's in there for a called strike. Let's pause 10 seconds for stations to identify themselves on the Angels baseball radio network. the ball in the left field but right there waiting position perfectly Melky Cabrera he caught a liner to start the inning and he catches one out there in left field to end the inning the Angels leave a runner at second and we have completed five it's seven nothing White Sox on the Angels baseball radio network and Fox Sports West. Angels will make a pitching change as Bud Norris is going to take over. We go to the sixth inning of 7-0 White Sox lead. Kirby Yates, who Norris replaces. Yates ended up working one inning 
He allowed three hits, three runs. They were earned, no walks, two strikeouts, and one home run allowed. Angels pitching through five innings with 10 strikeouts against the White Sox, but they've also uh, scored seven runs, and they have a big lead as we head to the sixth. Angels also have a new shortstop as Cliff Pennington has left the ball game, and Ray Navarro is uh, taking over for the Angels out there at short. Well, Terry, each outing continues to get bigger for those guys that are vying for spots out of that bullpen, and here's one of them, Bud Norris, who says he's finally over the nail in that blister issue, and that uh, we should expect to see better breaking balls and that two-seam fastball coming back, and he needs it. Here's his first pitch, and that one misses high for a ball. Norris in four appearances, one as a starter this spring, six and one-third innings, seven strikeouts, but he's allowed seven hits and four earned runs as ERA is over five and a half this spring. Here's the next pitch, and that's chopped foul on the right side. There's a pitch he really needs, a cut fastball. Unable to finish it for the last couple of outings. He was telling me about that yesterday. Now he's back to where he thinks he needs to be. And Keep an eye also on the gestures and reminders that he has all between pitches on things that he knows he needs to get on on the mound. Next pitch that's a little bit low and away. You'll see Norris gesture on staying back, keeping that front shoulder open, left hip driving towards the plate, not opening up, and extension with that arm to get more effect on his pitches. His next delivery, I want to just chop foul right by the plate by the nine-hole hitter, Liriano. He was the only White Sox who did not bat last inning when they sent eight to the plate and scored five times to bust this game open. Here's the 2-2. Two -two. And that is cut on and missed. And for the third time today, Liriano has struck out. Well, Norris, true to his word, hopefully this will stay. He was able to really go out there and put a little finish, a little extra on the breaks, on the breaking balls. Some more life and movement on that fastball. And he could be really big. Well, Terry, as Mike Slusher was telling us down there, Alfredo Griffin will be back here very soon for one simple reason. The Dominican is out of the World Baseball Classic, and congratulations, Jim Leland. And Team USA on a job well done. Yep. That was a fun game to watch last night. Packed house, record-setting crowd at Petco. Here's one that's chopped on the third base side, fielded there by Coward. His throw is in time and retired his ankle. That is out number two, 5-3 on the ground out. What a catch that uh, Adam Jones made against his own uh, Baltimore teammate last night, Manny Machado. Off to Dodger Stadium, Netherlands, Puerto Rico, USA, and Japan. It's been a tremendous tournament so far, and Puerto Rico pretty much the dominant team. They're calling it the catch by uh, Adam Jones in that game last night against the Dominican team. And here's a chopper that's hit the coward again. This one off the bat of Everett Cabrera. And another out at first base is going in. The innings of Bud Norris, uh, very efficient here. In the top of the sixth, he sets him down quickly. One, two, three. At the bottom of the sixth is next. Angels need runs. And some hits for that matter as well. Down 7 nothing on the Angels Baseball Radio Network and Fox Sports West.
Have a few changes here for the White Sox. We'll get to those in just a moment. At the plate is Cole Calhoun. The first pitcher is in there for a strike. They have a new shortstop in the game, Yolmer Sanchez. And they've also juggled up part of their uh, look in the outfield. The uh, center fielder, Adam Engel, has now moved over to right field. And leaving the game is Reimer Liriano and the new center fielder for the White Sox, former Angel Peter Borges. 0-2 on Cole Calhoun. Angels bat here, bottom of the sixth, and down by seven. Here's the pitch chopped on the right side. That is a foul ball. Interesting to see Peter Borges with the right side seat of form, and also he's shading Cole Calhoun over towards the left center field. In the meantime, a little fun over on the right side with that foul ball and one of the fans coming over and hustling after that baseball. Yeah, it looked like a Cubs fan who is here today. Good thing is that ball ended up in the right hands of a young man. Young little boy. Here's the 0-2, and that one uh, pitch checking on it is Cole Calhoun. They say he was holding up. As the Angels bat in the bottom of the sixth inning, it's being brought to you by our friends at Rotolo Chevrolet in Fontana. Rotolo Chevrolet pursuing excellence every day. You can visit them at rotolo.com. That's rotolo.com. Lefty Matt Perk came in last inning. And now working in his second inning of relief and the delivery and waving and missing that one badly was Cole Calhoun. He was really fooled on that pitch, struck him out. That pitch was way low and outside. Here's Mike Trout, who's had a walk and a strikeout today. Trout came in batting 258 this spring. He has yet to hit a home run. Perk is ready and the pitch. Trout cuts it down and fouls it off on the right side, backing out of play. When he drops that shoulder, then he's, <laughs> his gesture and reaction is like, wow, just missed that one. We see Mike Trout lift balls in the inner half and hit him almost like a left handed hitter to right center field. And that was pretty much that location there that he just missed. Time was called. Trout backs out of the batter's box. You see, Trout, how much more straight up he is. Last three years, when he first came to the big leagues, he was well spread with his legs. Here's the pitch. He lines that one into left field. That's going to bounce in for a base hit. Getting to the ball is Melky Cabrera. Fires the ball to second and does a good job to hold Trout to a one-out single. Now, I'll tell you something, hit. Terry, I was pointing out about Borges is where Borges was playing Calhoun is something that we don't see very often. Now where Melky was playing Trout, we also don't see very often close to that line because usually Trout hits that ball right there on any given series game at bat, and it's a double because they don't carry all the way to the wall. So uh, unconventional ways paying off here for the White Sox. It's a good job. Now the pinch runner over there is Torrey Hunter Jr. And Pops is here. Yeah, saw Torrey yesterday here. So the... Uh, Two sports star at Notre Dame, wide receiver for the Fighting Irish, and also a baseball player at Notre Dame is in there. And decided baseball is my sport. Torrey Hunter Jr., 23rd round pick by the Angels out of Notre Dame. And Torrey Hunter Sr., as mentioned, spent uh, some time here yesterday and today. Even had a chance to get together with the outfielders when Ron Renicki was talking about some of the drills today. It's the wealth of knowledge and a good man. There's a toss over to first base and Torrey Hunter Jr. gets back to the bag safely. Well, Torrey Hunter Jr. drafted uh, by the Angels last June. 
has never even played in a minor league game yet. And here he is in a major league spring training game. How about that? What's even stranger is that Albert Pujols is watching Torrey Jr. first base, who used to come and visit the Angels clubhouse. <laughs> right. Guess the play was dead, and dad is hiding all so well. A little nervous. Yeah, he's upstairs here uh, <laughs> in one of the uh, Angel offices checking out the action. <laughs> And here's the pitch. That one is low. Well, some of these angels that were teammates of Torrey Hunter saw Junior coming to the clubhouse as a son. And look at him now. Well, Junior can say to Senior now, hey, Dad, I, I got in a, a game with the Major League Club before I ever played a minor league game. You can't say that. <laughs> there you have it. Got him. 3-0 and oh is the count. It's the great moment. And here's the next pitch, and that is in there on Albert. So it's three and one. Brings back memories here of uh, Tom Hamilton, one of your good friends and colleague. Yep. With the Cleveland Indians broadcaster who, boy, I'll never forget that moment, that highlight, when he got to see his son play a game. Right. He was uh, drafted by the Indians and uh, was a minor leaguer and got a uh, call up to play for the major league team in a spring training game a few years ago. And uh, Tom uh, obviously was overwhelmed oh, to see that. It was yeah. great. Yeah. So emotional. Yeah. So his uh, son, Nicholas, and my son, Jordan, were born two days apart when we were together in Ohio uh, back in Columbus back in 1989. Those uh, two were each born on uh, Thanksgiving week. So Junior steps out to second base. Albert yeah. has a walk. He will be lifted for a pinch runner. That anxiously hiding and looking to, of course. I'd like to see him score a run. Get the Angels on the board. And the pitch on its way. That one is a little bit low. Dustin Ackley is the pinch runner for Albert. So he's the runner at first. And Torrey Hunter Jr. is the runner at second. And at the think, plate is Valbuena. You think Torrey Hunter Sr. set it up to say, hey, make, it, make sure he runs for Trout. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> Get Trouty out of there. Yeah, that, uh, I wouldn't doubt it. 2-0 <laughs> oh is the count. Torrey's doing some uh, things nowadays with his, uh, the other uh, club he played for. It broke into the big leagues with the Minnesota Twins. But Troy Hawkins is now... Uh, working for the twins of course uh, he and Tori are great friends and uh, Michael Kadire is also uh, uh, another former twins player that's now uh, back with their organization is kind of a special uh, assistant to uh, the front office yeah Tori and Latroy are uh, our neighbors over in Texas yeah Here's the next delivery, and that's a little bit low. I like Mike Soch's perspective when talking about Balbuena and some of the lefties that he'll have hit against left-handed pitchers and how they can lock you in, which means your approach is so focused on staying close and short to the baseball that that can carry on and have a very good effect on you in following at bats. Then comes a the regular season. It's all about matchups. There's a 3-0 pitch that misses, and Valbuena walks. So the Angels are going to see a new pitcher now. Looks like uh, that's going to be it for uh, Perk. They're going to come out and make a move and bring in uh, the uh, pitcher, the right-hander, warming up in the bullpen. So we have a break in the action. Pitching change. When we get back, we'll let you know who's coming in for Chicago. Right now, Angels down 7-0, but we'll have the bases loaded with one out when we return here on the Angels Baseball Radio Network and Fox Sports West.
New pitcher is Zach Birdie, and the Angels saw him a couple weeks ago. He pitched a scoreless inning of relief against the Angels the first time these two teams met. See if the Angels can do some damage against him here as Maben digs in with the bases jammed and the first pitch on Cameron. He takes it for a strike. Angels have another pinch runner, Sherman Johnson has uh, come in to run for Valbuena so all the runners on base and they're everywhere with the bases jammed they're all pinch runners next pitch that's way low and outside birdie is a hard thriller and the first round pick of the White Sox last June he's a guy that will hit triple digits with his fastball very good arm Here's the 1 1. That's a little bit low ball, 2 2 and 1. Birdie is appearing in his ninth game this spring. 11 strikeouts in eight and a third innings. 3.24 ERA. Made his debut professionally, as Terry mentioned last year, and they challenge him to four different levels immediately. He's set. And he delivers, and that's fouled off back to the screen behind the plate. Rookie, A, double, and triple A, all in 26 games, always as a reliever, 38 innings, 51 strikeouts. Opponents hit only 174 against them in his professional debut. And he averaged 12.1 strikeouts per nine innings. And in recent years, the White Sox hasn't, they haven't hesitated as that 2 2 pitch is cut on and missed. And he just got Maven struck him out, second out with the bases loaded. Danny Espinosa will be the next batter, but they haven't really uh, hesitated to uh, bring up some of their first round picks quickly, especially the pitchers, Chris Sale, Rodon, who we Rodon. saw today. Yep. And uh, Birdie could be a fast track guy as well. Go out there and expose him, give him that experience. They might take a different uh, approach with Moncada, though, this year. We'll see how the, that clock goes and when they start running that big league clock for Moncada. Here's the next delivery, and it's hit right at the second baseman, Jose just alluded to Moncada, and he will throw over to first base. He gets Espinosa, and Birdie comes in. The base is loaded, and one out, and gets back-to-back -back batters, and the Angels leave him loaded. Seventh inning is next, 7 nothing Chicago on the Angels Baseball Radio Network and Fox Sports West.
Here we go to inning number seven. Angels make a bunch of changes. We'll pick those up for you in just a moment. Looks like Bud Norris is going to continue out there on the mound, and the first batter he faces here is Melky Cabrera as a ball chopped to first base. Sherman Johnson is playing there for the Angels now, and he will solo to the bag for the easy out. So Norris, who set him down one, two, three last inning, gets the first batter quickly here in the seventh. Cody Ashey is the next batter for Chicago. Nolan Fontana Jose is now the second baseman for the Angels. Okay. Eric Young Jr. is now in in left field. Torrey Hunter Jr. is the center fielder. And in uh, right field, the Angels have uh, Ramon Flores. And Torrey Hunter Sr. has got some pull. He moved Eric Young Jr. to left field. How about that? <laughs> he had a son pinch run for Mike Trout, so keep it going, T. <laughs> well, he's calling the shots here this weekend, he Torrey Hunter. Here's the pitch, and that one is right in there for a called strike on Ashy. So two familiar names, Eric Young Jr. Pops. Could go get him, too, so... Terrific, solid players. Here's one bounced on the right side. One ball, one strike. Torrey Hunter himself, of course. The gold gloves in center field. When the Angels have Peter Boyd just come up and take over center field, Torrey said, okay, let's go to right field and take care of business now, too. Ultimate team player. Here's the one-two delivery, and that's a little bit low. It misses for a ball. But Norris, pitcher number three of the day for the Angels, and he's working in his second inning. And the 2-2, chopped foul over on the right side by the Angels' dugout. Definitely a much better command and control of his body and mechanics for Bud Norris, whom the Angels need to get into the map here in the death chart to give Mike Socha some reliable arms on a bullpen that uh, we think Terry will be... Uh, Composed by like seven pitchers. Yep, I think that's a pretty safe bet. Nothing is etched in stone here, but I would think uh, you'll have the five starters and seven bullpen. You'll have 13 position players, 12 pitchers all together. And Norris has done in the past. Scouts saying uh, he can live around the 92, 93 range as a starter, but uh, you bring him out of that bullpen as he did with the Dodgers a few times, and he'll live in mid, mid 90s. And there's a cut and a miss at a 3-2 pitch and. Down on strikes goes Ashy, so that's the second out. Saladino will be the next batter. Let's run down what's happening around the Cactus League today. In the ninth inning, Indians up on the D-backs 4-2. Seventh inning, Brewers lead the Giants 6-2. The Mariners and Rangers are now in the top of the eighth inning. It's 3-2 Texas in that one. Reds have an 8-4 lead against the Padres in the eighth as the pitch is taken for a strike. Rockies up on the A's, 9-2. That's in the eighth inning. Royals and Cubs will play later tonight. The uh, Dodgers are playing the Japanese WBC team right now, and that's a 2-1 lead for Japan, the bottom of the seventh in Florida today. Tigers beat the Orioles 7-1. Twins over the Red Sox 13-8. The Yankees beat the Astros 6-4. The Rays blank the Phillies 8-0. Cards over the Braves 5-2. Pitch was a ball. Blue Jays and Pirates, they combined for 30 hits and 22 runs. When it was all said and done, they played to an 11-11 tie. Nationals beat a Marlin split squad 10-4. The other Marlin split squad beat the Mets 7-5. In our game, it's all White Sox. They're up 7-0 here in the seventh, and there's a swing and a miss for strike two, two and two. White Sox did this against the Angels over at their ballpark, at Camelback Ranch, and what we saw there was left-handed hitters who did a great job driving the ball the other way. Todd Stevenson, the hitting coach, has got to be pretty happy about that, and so what he's seen here today. And there's a cut and a miss by Saladino. Another good inning for Bud Norris. Certainly his best outing this spring. He's retired all six in a row with three of them on strikeout. Seventh inning stretch time. And right now it's 7-0 Chicago on the Angels Baseball Radio Network and Fox Sports West.
First batter for the Angels as we start things off. Bottom of the seventh inning, Ray Navarro. And there are a few uh, changes, a couple changes defensively for the White Sox. They have a new third baseman, Nicky Delmonico, and they have a new left fielder, Leuri Garcia. Still out on the mound is Zach Birdie. He got the final two outs last inning for them. They've gone with three pitchers today. The Angels have also used three so far. And here's the first pitch. A little shot into left center field. Borges dives and makes the catch. Well, last few years we haven't seen too much of Peter Borges. We just saw what he can do with that glove out there in the outfield. Nice diving grab from his spot in center field. Oh, there's no doubt. We're talking about Torrey Hunter. We see Mike Trabater. We have seen some good center fielders in our state here with the Angels starting with Darren Ernst down to won a gold glove. And Peter Borges at the top when it comes down to reading the bat and getting angles and being able to have the quick burst first step which is remarkable and uh, even though he's had the issues with his hips hopefully uh, he's the one that takes grab and takes that job and gets a lot of playing time because we know when he's healthy he's he's an impact player. First pitch is in there on Carlos Perez he's gone all the way behind the plate in this game he's 0 for 2 hitting. Here's the next pitch, and that one misses a little bit low. And as you notice, Moore just always plays angle. He's never straight up. He says he always gets better reads regardless of who's on the mound. Slide it, slant it, one way or the other away from the bag on a straight line from home plate or center field. Here's the 1-1 one -one pitch. Chopped down the third base side. The new third baseman is Nicky Delmonico, and his throw is in time over to first, so two up, two quick outs. Caleb Cowart will be the next batter for the Angels. I want to remind Angel fans to get your red on, become a season seat holder to enjoy exclusive benefits and the same seats all season long at the greatest value. Visit angels.com slash season seats or call 888 796 Halo for more information. Coward has gone all the way at third base. This is his third at bat. He is 0 for 2. Made some nice plays defensively at third today. And here's the pitch. And that one comes in and nearly hit him. Ball got uh, by the catcher all the way back to the backstop. Arvias has been uh, catching this uh, ball game so far today for the White Sox. And Birdie's a guy that's come in and thrown strikes. 11 pitches under watchful eye of his manager Rick Renteria. Got to be happy with what we've seen retiring four batters in a row. There's a pitch in there for a called strike. Rick Renteria had been a coach with the White Sox and uh, replaced Robin Ventura as their manager. Of course, he's also uh, managed both the White Sox and the Cubs. And the pitch, that one is cut on and missed. Only he and Hall of Famer Johnny Evers, only managers to manage both the White Sox and the Cubs. Evers managed the Sox in 1924 and the Cubs in 1913 and in 1921. Renteria, the only current Latino manager in Major League Baseball. And the pitch, it's chopped right to second. It is handled there by... Mancata and the throw is in time and the Angels have a very quiet seventh inning against Birdie. The eighth is next and it's seven to nothing White Sox on the Angels Baseball Radio Network and Fox Sports West.
Here in the eighth inning, Angels use pitcher number four of the day. Austin Adams will be taking over for the Angels. And there's a new catcher, Francisco Arcia, is the battery mate of Adams as they get ready to work here in the eighth inning. The uh, batters scheduled for the White Sox are Davidson, Ancada, and Arvias. So Davidson will be stepping up and so far today he has gone one for three. Infield is playing it backed up and ready to work is Austin Adams the right hander hard thrower is set and here comes the first pitch on Davidson that one is high for ball one ball no strikes Adams is appearing in his sixth game this spring his record is 0 and 1 his ERA is 9.00 five innings seven hits allowed three walks four strikeouts and five runs allowed there's a pitch that missed so it's 2 0 solid job by but Norris have Having come in with a 5.68 ERA through four appearances, and he throws two very solid scoreless innings. So, Terry, that race, trying to get a hold of those jobs, is getting more and more intense by the game. And here's another one in Adams, trying to get better. Here's the delivery. It's lifted high in the air. It's hit well to right field. Flores is going back, and that one is going to leave. It's a home run. Davidson went the opposite way second home run of the game for the White Sox and their lead rose here in the eighth inning it's now eight nothing and a team that has struck out 13 times today continues to put runs on the board so it's hit or miss and they certainly have maximized every single chance they have gotten from the Angels whether it's a longer inning or just mistakes out over the play Matt Davidson with great power the other way. Yeah, of the 21 outs recorded against the White Sox, 13 on strikeouts. So when they made contact, they've uh, made real good contact, unfortunately, for the Angels today. First one here is high on Moncada, who hit a two-run homer his last time up. The White Sox came into today having hit a total of 23 home runs. Angels this spring have hit only 11 home runs and today is game 22. Here's the pitch and a cut and a miss. That's now 25 total for the White Sox. Who of course are, are counting during the regular season on the power of the Todd Frazier and Jose Abreu mainly and hopefully a developing Avisail Garcia, whom they've been waiting for a few years. Here's the next delivery. This one is hit well to center field. Torrey Hunter Jr. is in pursuit, and that ball is over his head. The ball will take a bounce and hop over the wall out there in center. Uh, Hunter Jr. went back a long ways, but it was hit over his head and, and hit that hard warning track surface and popped over the wall. Oh, he had the route, and for sure, he also was facing the challenging sun. It's Torrey Hunter Sr. knows very well in this ballpark in spring training and Cactus League action. It is not always easy once you put your head down and try to find the track to go back and retrace the baseball. You got to go a long ways for that one. So the catcher, Narvaez, is the batter. He's the eight-hole hitter. Here's the pitch, and that is on the inside part of the plate, a called strike. So Adams has faced two batters here in this eighth inning. He's given up a homer and now a ground rule double. Next pitch, that's waved at and missed. He brought Narvaez down to a knee chasing that pitch. Today's attendance, 7,193, 71, 93. Snaps a string of back-to-back uh, -back sellouts here, but still a nice crowd today.
Here's the delivery, and that one is high for ball. White Sox overall last season, 16 and a half games behind the Indians, who went off to win the American League and onto the World Series. But the White Sox were four games better than the Angels, was 78 and 84. Angels at 74 and 88. Here's the next pitch. That one is fouled off on the left side. The White Sox are still playing at the same stadium that they've been in for a number of years now, but it's going to have another new name this season. Guaranteed Rate Field is the name of their new ballpark. Not their new ballpark, but the new name of their ballpark. At one point, the original name was the New Comiskey. Yep. Here's the next pitch, and that one is low. White Sox were a team last year that they got off to a terrific start, you might remember. Even though they ended up the season 78-84, and 84, they won 23 of their first 33 games, and they were leading the... AL Central by six games on May the 9th. They were in first place. They're a really good team at home. They were 45 and 36, and their home ERA was a 3.7. And you talk about April 17 and 8. Then they went 11 and 17 in May, 12 and 14 in June. Finish off for a decent pace, 15 and 13 in September. Uh, they were uh, not too good on the road last year. They were 15 games under 500 on the road last season. And there is a 3-2 delivery that misses ball four. So things not going Adams' way right now. He's yet to retire a batter, and he's going to face his fourth of the day. And it's going to be Peter Borges who is going to bat for the first time. Fans, don't forget, get your red on. The 20-game flex plan offers a variety of options to choose from. Opening night, premium matchups, and promotional giveaway nights. Buy your flex plan today at angels.com slash ticket plan or call 888-796-HALO. Borges is the batter, right-hander against right-hander as Adams takes a look at second. He delivers, and Peter Borges takes that one for a ball. Borges this spring, he's had a good spring at the plate. He's hitting 387, 12 for 31. A couple runs batted in. But as they be in the big leagues with the Angels back in 2010, playing 51 games. And the next delivery that went on. Borges is inside for a ball. Borges quickly put together a nice highlight reel on the spectacular plays he made in center field. And one thing about Borges, there was not a lot of diving going around to make spectacular catches, but he also was a master of coming in on balls. He never stopped. Great communicator with the middle infielders. And shoestring catches, something that uh, Terry has kind of disappeared. Yeah. Here's a pop-up out in front of the pitcher's mound, and a good job by the Angels' uh, new catcher who's in there, Francisco Arcia, to tell the pitcher, Austin Adams, I'll handle it, and he did about halfway between home plate and the mound, so a high pop. That's the first out in the inning. Runners holding, and now the uh, top of the batting order, and this is Adam Engel. They've uh, kept a number of their starters in the ballgame. Engel's going to bat for the fifth time today. He has switched positions in this ball game, but he's still in the game. Right-hander against right-hander. 8-0 White Sox. And when the Angels played the White Sox two weeks ago, the uh, White Sox won that game against the Angels by eight runs. They won that one 10-2, so they've been... Tough on the Halos here this spring. Here's the pitch. It's taken for a called strike. Engel was swung the bat so well today after a strikeout in the first inning. The single to left in the third. Double to left center in the fifth. He's from Cincinnati, and he is considered the best defensive outfielder in their minor league system. 
Here's the next pitch on him, and that one is low. Angle uh, A ball, double A, and triple A. So he was moving around in the White Sox system last year. Here's the next delivery. It's chopped to short. Could be two. Flipped to second, but Engel can run, and he beats the relay throw. So it's a fielder's choice. Angels get the out to retire Narvaez at second. And runners at the corners now with two outs as Moncada moves to third, and Engel, the batter, is on on the fielder's choice. He can go down that line. He stole 45 bases last year. I've got a good jump as Navarro at shortstop had to make sure he was accommodating his feet to get the right hop and at least get one for sure out, which he does at second base. Well, the young outfielder who's uh, really impressing in camp for the White Sox is Jacob May. And his bloodlines, of course, he is the grandson of Lee May. Here's the next delivery, and this one is lifted in the air into left field, circling under is Eric Young, Jr. That'll retire Yolmer Sanchez, who was batting for the first time in the ballgame. He's now playing shortstop for them, and that's how the inning will end. But they got the leadoff homer. They'll leave a couple runners on base, and as we head to the bottom of the eighth, it's an 8-0 White Sox lead on the Angels Baseball Radio Network and Fox Sports West. Sox make a few changes as we go to the Angels bottom half of the eighth inning. They have a new pitcher, Jake Dunning, a new catcher, Wilfredo Rodriguez. And they also have a new first baseman, Danny Hayes. Dunning, who's pitching, is up from their minor league camp and is first delivery here on Nolan Fontana. That one misses for a ball. It's one ball, no strikes. Tory Hunter Jr. is waiting on deck. And here's the next one on Fontana. That's taken for a strike. Nolan is batting out of Cole Calhoun's leadoff spot. Cole was 0 for 3 today. Yeah, Nolan Fontana has been a guy with a hot bat here lately. Really striking the ball to every part of the field and driving the ball also in the gaps the other way. Mike Soja quite pleased and seeing the opportunity that uh, Fontana has been getting due to the absence of Andrelton Simmons. 
So the count is two and one on Fontana. And the next delivery takes that one low and away. Ball three. Three and one. Fontana this spring is hitting 276. Has a homer six RBIs. On eight for 29 at the plate. Dunning is pitching for the very first time this spring for the White Sox and the delivery it's fouled back behind the plate the bottom of the eighth inning it's being brought to you today by Rotolo Chevrolet and Fontana Rotolo Chevrolet is pursuing excellence every day visit them at Rotolo.com that's Rotolo.com Here's the next delivery, and that is low and inside, ball four. He's always had a good eye, Terry. He's 379 on base percentage throughout his minor league career, even though he only has a 237 batting average through 452 games. For the season where Fontana walked 102 times back in Lancaster in 2013. So the batter is Torrey Hunter Jr. First time up for him this spring with the Angels and the pitch on its way. That one is taken for a ball. One ball, no strikes. If dad was nervous when he was running as a pinch runner, just imagine now. <laughs> Watch it from the window. One ball, no strikes on Torrey Hunter Jr. And that one is in there for strike. He got a nice round of applause. And if it was Torrey Hunter Sr. who was uh, getting that applause, he would have said, thank you very much. <laughs> Tip his helmet as he did to the crowd, crowd many times when he came back to visit Angel Stadium with a new team. Here's the 1-1. One, one, and that one on Jr. He takes it outside. It's two balls and a strike. Mike Trout cannot say enough about how blessed he feels and how he come up to the big league surrounded by Torrey Hunter and by Albert Pujols. Torrey Hunter Jr. is 21 years old. Here's the pitch and he swings so hard and misses that when he fell down. Yes he did. Went down spinning. Trying to impress Pops. Yep. He's always had the good sense of humor too. Senior is going to say to Junior uh, later tonight, what was up on that 1-2 or the 2-1 uh, pitch that you chased? Probably going to say, looking at the buttes like you did many times here, too. And there's one that he waves at and misses. He struck him out. So that is going to be out number one in the inning. Strikeout for Dunning. And Dustin Ackley will be the next batter. Torrey Hunter Jr., who uh, just batted there was uh, selected by the Angels in the 23rd round of last June's draft out of Notre Dame. This is one of those days when you go back reflect on it and find out how quickly the game happens at the big league level and to just say hey I got my feet wet spring training yep and I have a better taste even slight better taste of what it's like it's after spending so much time Terry as a Son and around the clubhouses, knowing the culture of the game and understanding the lingo and everything that goes along with the brotherhood and the clubhouse, watching his father from the stands and other players that he got to meet through the years. Between the white lines, of course, as we all have learned, having grown up in the game, is it's a different story. I always hear in uh, professional sports that for young players, you got to slow the game down. Game speeds up on you. It goes really fast in the big leagues. Yep. Really fast. Two balls and two strikes is the count. Jake Dunning on the hill. He's probably feeling that to some degree out there uh, pitching as well. And there's a pitch that is taken on the inside corner by Ackley and he is a strikeout victim got him looking back to back strikeouts had a lot of strikeouts in this ball game now uh, 10 recorded by White Sox pitching and Angel pitching with 13 strikeouts today yeah, there's a lot of holes in those barrels today what's going on yeah but there's an eighth spot out there by the White Sox with 11 hits yeah so here's the next pitch and uh, 
That one is uh, ball to count one and zero. Oh. Here's one that's a little bit low. Sherman Johnson getting uh, exposed to different positions here in spring training has played some second. We see him at short in the pass, first base, third base. A player that the Angels hope that uh, will take the next step and make himself available on that depth chart by understanding the role that he needs to play and also show some progress moving forward as a player. Here's the next delivery, and that's in there for a called strike on Sherman Johnson. The next step is going to be consistency on the batting average, on base percentage, making contact. Here's the pitch. That's a liner in the right field. That is going to fall in. It's going to roll all the way down in the right field corner. Extra bases written all over it. The lead runner is going to be waved home. That's Fontana. He'll score. Angels finally get a run today. Courtesy of Johnson and Fontana. The double brings in the runner from first base. And now it's an 8-1 White Sox lead. A great feeling for Johnson. Came into the game only 4 for 13. And he really does a great job getting himself a good count to hit it and staying so close to that pitch. Squared it up. And certainly did a great job reacting at the last minute. So stepping up now for the Angels is Flores. He bats with a runner at second, a run in, two outs in the inning, and here's the pitch, and that one from Dunning is low. It's 1-0. and Let's pause for stations to identify themselves on the Angels Baseball Radio Network. Here's a pitch that is cut on and missed for strike. As Jake Dunning has a brother who's also in the White Sox system, who's a pitcher as well. There's a pitch taken for a ball. Jake Dunning, a player who signed uh, with the White Sox during the offseason. And here's these, his next delivery that's in there for a called strike. White Sox got his brother from the uh, Washington Nationals in that Adam Eaton deal. Here's a fly ball lifted down the left field side and a nice running catch out there by Leury Garcia, the new left fielder, and the inning is over. So that'll do it for the Angels here. As we wrap up eight, we hit to the ninth. It's 8-1 Chicago on the Angels Baseball Radio Network and Fox Sports West.
ninth inning we go, and the Angels will uh, make a pitching change. Austin Adams, who worked the last inning, has left the ball game. He was touched for two hits, including a home run. He gave up one run. It was earned. He ended up walking a batter and did not strike out any. And the new pitcher the Angels have brought into the ball game is Aaron Cox. And he is a uh, young man who pitched an A ball in the Angels system a year ago. And he was at Class A Burlington. Aaron Cox is uh, from an area that we have mentioned many times here in the last five years. Vineland, New Jersey. Yeah, Mike Trout has some uh, roots to that part of uh, South of Jersey. And he is also a product of Melville Senior High School. There you go. So ready to uh, step up against Cox is Garcia. And here's the first pitch. That one is fouled back. Aaron Cox is 22 years old. 6'3", 205 pounder. And uh, did some college pitching at Gannon University. That small school is located in Erie, Pennsylvania. Here's the pitch. That is taken for a strike. <clears throat> it's got to bring a smile to Mike Trout, wherever he might be, maybe even watching this inning. When somebody told him that uh, Aaron Cox was in. Yep. Here's the next delivery, and that one is a pitch that is a little bit low. And Cox is only 22 years old. Two seasons in the minor leagues, 19th rounder by the ends of 2015. 57 games all in relief. 86 total innings, 75 strikeouts. Here's the next delivery, and that one is bounced by the mound and uh, through into center field. So Garcia has a leadoff hit against Cox. Going to have a pinch hitter now for the White Sox. Looks like Casey Schroeder is going to be the pinch hitter. So he is uh, batting out of Ashy's spot. That was the cleanup spot. He's a player who's up today from their minor league camp. And he goes after the first one and fouls that one off. <laughs> so. Casey Schroeder is not going to be cheated. <laughs> that is into the street beyond Tempe Diablo Stadium. He's a left-handed batter. And here's the next pitch. This is popped in the air near home plate. Garcia, the catcher, is under outside the uh, batter circle. He makes the catch on that one. And that'll be out number one. One gone, one on. Mentioned Aaron Cox. He went to the same high school as Mike Trout. He's three years younger than Trout, but I'm sure uh, with that uh, high school in uh, Millville, New Jersey, small town in uh, South Jersey, uh, everybody probably knows everybody. So I'm sure uh, the Trouts and the Coxes have known each other. Yeah, Mike's still pretty involved in that program. In many ways, in fact, helping to refurbish and keep those facilities up to par. Isn't the high school field named for him now because of uh, the money that he donated uh, to refurbish it? Who else? Why not? Yeah. One ball, no strikes is the count. This is Delmonico at the plate. And as he bats, this is his first time up today. Nicky Delmonico. Two and oh is the count. And the next delivery, that's a little bit low. Cox last year did some closing at Class A Burlington. He had 10 saves, 33 appearances. And the next delivery on the 3-0, he's going to walk the batter, Delmonico. So he has a one-out walk. First baseman, 
You can see a young right-hander who's trying to just uh, get his body and his arm in sync. And keep in mind, for these minor league players, for many of them appearing now at the big league level here in spring training, camp did not start too long ago for them. Danny Hayes will be the batter. And they don't have the luxury of working out for seven to ten days. It's a workout a few days, and you are right in there playing games in the minor league side. Here's the pitch, and that one is taken for a called strike. So at times, all your adjustments, all your improvements, and things that you're working on have to come to light immediately. So make sure you have a job at the end of March. 0-1, that's lifted in the air down the left side, a long run after it, unable to get to it is Eric Young. It's gonna go back out of play, out of his reach. No balls, two strikes. We've seen Matt Shoemaker today. Shoemaker went the first four innings. He had eight strikeouts. He allowed four runs, only two earned. Kirby Yates was in after Shoemaker, and he gave up a home run, a two-run shot, three runs overall in his one inning. But Norris uh, did the best job of any of the relievers today as he came in and retired all six in a row that he faced with three of them striking out. Austin Adams gave up a home run last inning to the first batter he faced. And now Aaron Cox working here in the ninth. The right-hander is ready, and the next pitch grounded through the right side. That's going to be a base hit. They'll hold the lead runner at third. They have him loaded. So the second hit in the inning, a walk and a pop out in the inning as well. And runners everywhere as the White Sox are looking to add to their total. They've scored eight today. And getting another at bat in this ball game is going to be the second baseman, Moncada. He's had a double, a two run homer, and the Angels have gotten him out a couple of times. So a two for four day. Just solid looking player on the defensive side flawless today smooth with all his moves and with the bat he's got some thunder in it swings at the first pitch fouls it off on the left side back and out of play crowd has thinned out a bit and here comes the next pitch and that one is a little bit outside and high. Shadows starting to creep in from behind home plate. It's a ball game already over the three hour mark and the pitch. That one is a low and inside. So it's a 2 1 count here on Moncada. Moncada is out of uh, Cienfuegos in Cuba. Also, the hometown of Riasiel Puig of the Dodgers. Eight games for Boston in the big league level last year hit 211. And the next delivery and this ball is hit well in the right center field. It's a gapper. It's going to bounce all the way out to the wall. One run scores. A second is coming in. And it's second base with a double is Moncada. His second double of the game. The lead grows for the White Sox. They're now up 10 to 1. There's a compact, powerful stroke that we have heard about so often. We're watching him take batting practice over in Glendale a couple of weeks ago and hearing the thunder off of that bat, the thump, understanding how quickly he is to the baseball, how strong he is to the wrist and forearm area. We can see why. He's going to be a guy that can really explode without having to go get too many pitches and to have a lot of extension. No Angels manager Mike Sosu is coming out to the mound. We're going to have a pitching change. That'll be it for Cox. When we get back, we'll fill you in on who will be taking over the uh, sixth pitcher of the day for the Angels. We'll know who it is in just a moment. Break in the action. 10-1 White Sox here in the ninth. Pitching change coming up on the Angels Baseball Radio Network and Fox Sports West.
Angels have brought in lefty Chris O'Grady, former 10th round pick of the Angels in 2012. It's a big lefty. He goes about 6'4", 220, and pitched at Arkansas and Salt Lake a year ago. And O'Grady has been in two games this spring for the Angels, just an inning and a third. He has allowed two hits, but no runs. So he will be trying to get uh, the final two outs here in the top of the ninth. Aaron Cox retired just one of the five batters that he faced. He gave up three hits, walked a batter, and right now charged for two runs, the two runners on base, his property. So Grady is on the hill. And here comes the lefty's pitch, and that one is a strike on the outside corner. I was hoping uh, we were going to see Chris O'Grady on St. Patrick's Day, but uh, wasn't on the roster that day. It's okay. It worked out. We got Patrick O'Neill. And we did. That we worked Patty, out perfectly. We had uh, Patty O'Neill on St. Patty's Day. There's one lifted down the right field side. It is going to push foul. So the count's no balls and two strikes. O'Grady was a pitcher of the Angels lost as a Rule 5 draftee back in December of 2015, but then was returned. The uh, Reds had taken him in that Rule 5 draft. Yet the pitch at the major league level, although in 2015 he spent most of spring training with Cincinnati at the major league camp and the pitch. This is chopped to short, handled there by Navarro. His throw to first is in time, breaking from third and coming in and scoring on that ground out will be the lead runner, Hayes. So they get their 11th run in the game. It's now 11 to 1 Chicago with two outs here in the ninth. And Peter Borges will bat second time up for Peter today. Local product gets a lot of friends and family in the area. Many uh, Angels fans that remember him. So Grady against Borges and the first delivery. That's outside and misses for ball one. Peter Borges lives in uh, Scottsdale. And here's the pitch. He pops this one up on the right side. The second baseman is Fontana. He's going to be called off in shallow right field by Ramon Flores, the right fielder. The catch is made, and the inning is over. So Grady comes in and retires uh, two in a row. And that'll do it here for the White Sox in the ninth. We go to the bottom of the ninth, and the Angels need runs down 11-1 on the Angels Baseball Radio Network and Fox Sports West.
Angels get ready to bat bottom of the ninth we go and the Angels are going to face a new pitcher Matt Cooper who is up from the White Sox minor league camp will be the new pitcher and this will be the first time that he has pitched for them this spring. Eric Young Jr. is the first batter for the Angels here to start off the ninth. This is his first at bat today. And the first pitch on Coop, he takes it for ball one. It's one ball, no strikes. Eric Young, I should say, and the pitch. And that one is a shot in the center field. It's going to drop in for a base hit. So Young is on. And the next batter for the Angels is going to be Ray Navarro. Navarro is 0 for 1 since coming into the ball game. Jake Dunning, who worked last inning for the White Sox, gave up one hit, one run. It was earned, one walk, and two strikeouts. So here's the next pitch and Cooper's delivery on Navarro. That's a ball outside. It's one ball, no strikes. Jose Mota is headed downstairs. He'll have the post-game interview coming up once this ball game is over. And then uh, Jose and Patrick O'Neill will have Angels live after the game on Fox Sports West. We'll have some more for you on the radio side as well. One ball, one strike on Navarro. Next pitch. And that's a little bit low and inside. The White Sox have led this game since the third inning when they scored the game's first two runs, and then they really uh, put some distance between themselves and the Angels with a five-run fifth, and they're up by ten runs here in the ninth. Three and one is the count. Next pitch from Cooper, and that one is low, and the Angels have their first two on. Matt Cooper, I'm sure, uh, has some nervous energy out on the mound for Chicago, with this being his first appearance for them all spring. Player up from their minor league camp. So Francisco Arcia will be the batter. This is his first at bat today. He's hitting out of Carlos Perez's spot in the batting order, and Carlos today was 0 for 3. Arcia this spring, just one hit. He's only had six at bats. Swings from the left side and the pitch. That's right in there for a called strike. Angels have Caleb Coward waiting on deck. He's played the entire ball game, and when he steps up, it'll be his fourth time up. Been over there at third base all game long for the Angels. Next delivery, it's going to run the count to two balls and one strike. Cooper last year pitched at Winston-Salem and Birmingham. A ball and double A in the White Sox system, and the next delivery chopped to first. The throw to second pops out of the glove of the uh, shortstop over there. And everybody's going to be safe. So the Angels are going to have the bases loaded. And Cowart will be the batter. An error on that play. Probably on the throw by Hayes. It was a little bit high. The ball popped out of the glove of the shortstop Sanchez. First error for the White Sox. Angels have the bases loaded but have a long mountain to climb here, down by 10 runs in the ninth. Cowart batting for the fourth time today. He's 0 for 3, and the pitch that's right in there for a strike. Matt Cooper is from the state of Washington, born in Seattle. He's ready, and the next pitch that's waved at him missed. Nothing in two is the count. Cooper's in his fourth pro season. He has not pitched higher than a double A in the White Sox system. Here's the delivery. That's lifted foul on the left side. That's going to get back and out of play. So the count is nothing in two on Caleb Cowart. Who 
2 pitch. And he had him reaching there. He fouls it back to the screen, so he stays alive. Already 15 pitches thrown in the inning here by the young right-hander for the White Sox. Cooper has a new baseball, and here's the pitch, and that one is low. One and two. See what happens on the next delivery, and here it comes to Cowart. It's a shot into right center field. Chasing hard, diving, and making another great catch is Borges. Tagging it third and coming in and scoring on what will be a sack fly will be Eric Young, but Borges just made another terrific play out in the outfield. He went running to his left and out there in right center field made a diving catch on that one. Angels get a run on it, a sack fly, and now it's 11 to 2 in favor of the White Sox. And the batter will be Fontana. Give Cower to run batted in. But that was a good play by the former Angel Peter Borges. Fontana has walked his only time up and he scored a run. He takes that one for a strike. Waiting on deck is Torrey Hunter Jr. who struck out his first time up. Here's the pitch. And that's a little bit low and away. One ball, one strike. Here's the next delivery, and that one is cut on and missed. So it's one and two. Angels off tomorrow, and then back in action on Tuesday as the Angels will play the Reds in Goodyear. Here's the pitch, and that one is cut on and missed, and down on strikes goes Fontana. So now two outs here in the bottom of the ninth. Now Torrey Hunter Jr. batting. Of course in his days at Notre Dame playing wide receiver and he was a starter for uh, the Notre Dame football team. Played some baseball at Notre Dame as well but a lot more football. Here's the pitch and he takes that one for a called strike. He would play and there might be 60, 70,000 fans there for uh, some Notre Dame football games, whether home games or on the road. Right now, we might have a couple of thousand left for this ball game, but I'm sure he's feeling uh, maybe a lot more jittery in this situation than he would uh, playing before a substantial more amount of fans when he was playing football. I don't think the, the crowds affected him at all, but a different situation here today playing for the Angels in this game. His dad and family on hand. He fouled the 0-1 pitch off, and now he's in the hole. It's nothing and two. And here comes the two-strike pitch. He swings at that one, got a piece of it, fouling it back behind the plate. So still no balls, two strikes on Hunter. Right-handed batter. Texas native Torrey Hunter Jr. And here's the next pitch. He swings and misses that one, struck him out. And that's how the ball game will end. Angels got a run in the inning, had a hit, and end up leaving two runners on base. So today it was all White Sox as they win this ball game by the final score of 11 to 2. Angels uh, never held a lead in the ball game and were out hit today 14 to 5 in uh, dropping their uh, second of two spring training games here to the White Sox. The Angels Cactus League record now after 22 games stands at 12 and 10 and the White Sox are now uh, 12 10 and 1 
here in uh, Cactus League play. Jose Mota will be joining us shortly for the post-game interview, and uh, we'll see uh, what is going to happen there as far as uh, Jose's guest will uh, have that for you here in just a moment as well. The Angels will have the day off tomorrow, and we'll uh, be back in action, as I mentioned, on Tuesday. Uh, taking on the Reds in uh, Goodyear. Well, I think we're going to have a father-son duo here uh, joining Jose. Looks like Torrey Hunter Jr. and Torrey Hunter Sr. down there with Jose. So let's uh, head down uh, near the Angels dugout on the first base side. Here's Jose Mota. Thanks, Harry. Well, I have to double up on the questions now. How special was this moment for you to see Junior on the field today? It's pretty awesome, man, to come out on the field, and especially the pinch run for Mike Trout, one of my little brothers in the game, and, you know, Trout kind of messed around with him when he was younger, and, and it, was, it was pretty special to see your son go out there and, and uh, uh, kind of play the game that you, you grew up playing. Son, how special was it for you knowing that dad was up there a little nervous around the windows watching you? Uh, it was awesome, man. It was a great opportunity to come out here. Uh, you know, coming up from minor league camp, um, you just kind of don't want to leave, man. It gives you something to to work for, you know, and it, it kind of creates a fire you to be up here with these guys. It also lets you see how these guys work, and I'm looking forward to it, uh, you know, in the future. Hey, you've seen that from the kids' perspective, from the clubhouse, how these guys prepare, but uh, how different is it now perspective-wise to see and be on the field with Pujols and with Trout and so forth, the Mike Socia managing you? Yeah, it's, uh, it's definitely... It's different, you know, being a kid, you don't really understand. Uh, but now that you're here and um, you're a part of it, it's, it's, it's totally different, uh, the amount of work that they put in and um, the preparation that goes into it before a game. Tori Sr., for you, what's next and what are you doing now? And how do you keep an eye on your son as he develops? Well, you know, right now I'm just being a dad, man. I've uh, got one trying to get into the NFL right now, and uh, i got Tori here, you know, working his way up to the major leagues. And, and it's my job to you know, be a father, and, uh, and that's what I'm trying to do. And, and also I, I still kind of give it back in, in Major League Baseball, actually special assistant with the Twins. And, and uh, also, you know, the Angels is my family, and, and, uh, and it's something that, I, you know, this place is where I really, you know, uh, just kind of got adopted and really love. And so whenever guys call, I mean, they need some information. I'm here. You you only get wisdom from failure, and I failed a lot. <laughs> Thanks so much. Always a pleasure, Mike. My, people remember you so much love. Now, with your dad, what do you remember in terms of him getting ready for a game, for a season that perhaps you can carry on to your career? Um, just the mental part of it. Uh, I think that's the biggest thing for a lot of guys is, is mostly mental. I mean, you got here. You know, to the to the, to this level, um, you know, you already know how to swing, you know how to catch, you know how to throw, but it's the mental side that you have to master. And I think that's the biggest thing uh, that a lot of these guys have at this level. We wish you the very best. Thank you very much. Thank you. Appreciate it. Terry, with the Hunter family special, it's back to you. Enjoy yep. your off day. You got it, Jose. Uh, what a pleasure to see uh, Tory Hunter and uh, young Tory Hunter Jr. as uh, Jose had the uh, visit with them here after today's ball game. Well, the Angels drop it today by the final of 11 to 2. For those of you watching on the TV side, Jose Moto along with Patrick O'Neill will have a lot more post-game analysis. It's coming up in just a moment on Fox Sports West on Angels Live. We'll have some more for you on the radio side on this Sunday as well. This is the Angels Baseball Radio Network and Fox Sports West.